Okay, we got Tony Verdugo in here. He's come all the way from California, Vegas, to West Palm to fix some things up. And uh, I had asked you before we got on, you were, you've were lived in Vegas, you lived in L.A., you lived in Huntington Beach. Uh, what was your favorite out of the three? Out of the three, uh, Los Angeles. Prior to the epidemic. And yeah, the mess. yeah. Now, when you left there a month ago, what did you see? Like, how bad was it? It's bad. It's bad. It's not friendly anymore. It's not uh, kind anymore. It's dirty. It's dangerous. It's dangerous? Yeah. And pe have people changed? Like, the way people act? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you have all kinds of people that are mass Nazis. Oh. You know, they, they got a little bit of power, and they're uh, cruel to each other instead of being kind to each other. Yeah. And yeah. you do think that they'll get that jerk off out of there? Oh, man. There's uh, already 1.5 million votes to get him out. Yeah, he's not done anything positive for the state whatsoever. And everybody's leaving. They're going to Texas yeah. or down here. Or down or, Florida yeah. or Arizona or Texas or yeah. wherever. Yeah. We also got DJ Legato in here. Right back in here like I never left, huh? Yep, same old, <laughs> same old. Yeah. With his man, Tony. So now how did you two meet? Oh, man. I'll tell you what. That is God's will. When I got here, on the well, actually on the on the plane flight here, I was thinking, I need to meet the magnet. I need I need to meet the Pied Piper of uh, West Palm Beach. And uh, I landed, and uh, I got me a got me a car. And before I got here, I had Googled what was cool in West Palm Beach. And uh, Clamata Street came up. So I knew that that was one of my destinations, Clamata Street. And so I, uh, I went down to Clamata Street, and I was just walking down Clamata Street, and I heard this good sound, nice sound, and I noticed uh, this gentleman, host, at the door, dancing, talking, and I stopped and I just watched, and he was talking to all the pretty girls, hugging them, saying hi, as they walked on by. I must have watched for a good 20, 30 minutes. Then I went up to him and I introduced myself and I said, hey, you're one hell of a doorman. And uh, that was Future. He's one hell of a doorman. And uh, he goes, well, you know, you want to go in? And so I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went in and uh, I, w I looked up and uh, I saw Legato. And uh, he had the place packed. I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. Asses to asses, the whole bit. And he was playing uh, to all races. And that's what I'm really into. All races of people coming together, having a good time. I believe in we're all one race, the human race. And I must have stayed in there a good, good hour or two and just watched. And I thought, this is the vibe that I want at the Spearmint Rhino in West Palm Beach. Except topless, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I thought, you know, man, if we could have this, this would be cool. This is the future. And so I uh, I just looked around and said hi to some people. And uh, then I, on my way out, I, I, uh, I introduced myself again to future. And I said, hey, you know, I'd like to talk with you guys. And he says, hey, you know. We used to do things at the Rhino. And I said, what do you mean used to? And he says, well, you know, let's get together sometime and uh, we'll, we'll tell you what happened. I said, okay, cool, cool, cool. So then I left and I, I walked up and down Clamata Street twice and just kind of went bar, sh bar hopping and went into pawn shop and just various places like that. And I thought, wow, this place is really cool. And then I went, I went uh, back to my hotel and... Uh, I, each night I talk to God and I, I, uh, I try to like manifest things that I want to happen. And I said, man, I sure would like to meet Legato and Future outside of there and talk. So the next day I was going to go look at a condominium here in West Palm Beach to buy. And a realtor uh, met me at uh, the condominium complex. And I uh, went in, and um, I wanted to see all the amenities. And uh, I, uh, I have a medical exemption, so I don't wear a mask. 
I have severe asthma. So they're like, well, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the, the handyman, uh, maintenance man, uh, engineer to show you around. I said, okay, cool. So he takes me and he shows me the gym and then he shows me the weight room and, um, he shows me the sauna and he says, Hey, uh, what are you doing here in uh, West Palm beach? I said, oh, I'm, I'm from LA. I'm here to revamp the Rhino here. Once again, he says, Hey, we used to do things there. And I'm like, what do you mean used to? And he says, well, we can't really talk here. He's like, why don't we meet for dinner? I said, okay, cool. I said, Hey, I really like that Kamada street. Uh, why don't we meet down there? He says, okay, eight o'clock. I said, okay, cool. So he finishes showing me around. The place is beautiful and stuff like that. So I go back to the hotel and uh, 7.30 rolls around. I roll down to Clamata Street and uh, I get there about uh, 7.30, 7.30-ish. And I'm waiting for them to come. And he comes walking up, the maintenance guy, right? The maintenance engineer of the building. Mm -hmm. And he's walking with Legato. What luck is that, huh? That's not luck. It's God's will. God's will. Yeah. So I'm like, no way. Thank you. You know, thank the big guy upstairs. You know, thank you. And so he sits down and talks to me. And he talks to me very matter-of-factly, very educated on nightlife. Legato? Legato. When he came in here the first time, yeah, I knew of him and had heard about him. Yeah. And then when I sat down across from him for, what, two hours, three hours— I cannot believe how fucking smart he was. Yes. They and I I don't know if you've watched some of the other ones I've done. I always bring you up. I say, yeah. especially right after cuz I was shell shocked. Yeah. Cuz I was like, not only is he a beast the uh DJ and, oh, and yeah. a promoter. Sure. This guy is smart. Like smart smart. Smart smart. Intelligent smart, yes. not just like the club guy that plays the DJ. Right. He's smart and I was taken aback. Yes. That's why I call him Anthony. Yes. Because you know, like, yeah, you're DJ Legato. Yeah. But due to, like, the intelligence that I observed sitting with you for three hours, out of respect, I call you Anthony. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I mean, I was blown away. So oh, I, yeah. I'm sure, I mean, yeah. you, you're going for a promoter, DJ, pack the house, and then yes. you see how smart he is. Yes. Boom. That's a deal right there. Absolutely. And um, in being in the nightclub world, I... Uh, carry a clicker a lot of times just to click entries into the door. I'll sit at the bar and click how many people came to the bar or I'll, you know, just various things in the club world. I'll, I'll click just to see the numbers, you know? So I had a clicker in my pocket and we're sitting on Kamada street and a girl came up and hugged him, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to click and see how many people hug this guy and say hi to him in the two hour time we have dinner. I didn't pay attention to it till later. I'll get back to that. So he talks talks to me very intelligently. Very, he knows the nightclub world. He knows how to make a club money. He knows how to pick it, to pack it with quality people. He knows the diversity of the music. He knows customer service, which is huge. That's what I pride myself on. He knows how to treat people. He knows how to make them feel important. He knows how to make them feel like they've they're somebody. You know what I mean? Because Everybody wants to go somewhere and treat, be treated like a somebody. He knows that. And I'm, I'm talking to him like, wow, okay, great, great, great. In my mind, I thought, man, he would make a great, a great manager, a great general manager. So I asked him, I said, hey, you have any, uh, any, uh, any thoughts about ever managing a club? He goes, oh, no, 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 man. I, I make six figures, bro. I'm a traveling DJ. I'm a world-class DJ. I don't have time for that. <laughs> so I said, okay, okay, okay. So uh, so I said, okay, cool, cool. So we got done with dinner, and he says, what are you going to do? And I said, oh, I, don't, I don't have any plans. He's like, let's go to this club. So we're walking into the club, and I pull the clicker out of my pocket. Guess how many people hugged this guy in the two hours that we were sitting there? 37. 107. Fuck. No shit. And and you know what I love about what you do? Numbers don't lie. They don't lie. So I can tell you something. Rob can tell you something. Anthony can tell you something. But them numbers don't lie. Yeah. So I was so so impressed. You know, I was like, wow. So we get into the club and everybody knows him at the club. So they give us the VIP section. 
everybody. As soon as we got in there, the DJ shouting him out. I'm like, yep, I found the Pied Piper of West Palm Beach. Yeah. <laughs> so we get a bottle. We have a nice VIP section, girls, what have you. And uh, I says to him again, I said, so you don't have any inclination about being a manager? He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I got some good managers, though. So I said, okay. So we had a great time. We, uh, we uh, said our goodbyes, this, that, and the other. And uh, once again, I went back to the hotel and I started talking to the big guy. And I, I said, how can we make, a, make Legato an offer he can't refuse? So the next day I called him. I said, hey, uh, let's pick your favorite restaurant. Oh, I got something to talk to you about. He goes, yeah? I go, yeah. So he picks Breakers. I'd never been there before. What a beautiful place. Yeah. And um, I had talked I had talked with uh, the president of our company, and I said, this is the guy. This is the guy. This is the guy. This, this guy reminds me of when I was, you know, 30 years old in, in Las Vegas, the Pied Piper, you know? So I said, okay, I'm going to make him an offer to be the general manager. And this is way outside the box in our industry. Never before in our industry has a world-class traveling DJ promoter become a general manager. Usually the general manager starts as the doorman then he works his way up the ladder right. over 10, 20 years, you know? So I thought, okay, let's meet at Breakers. So we meet at Breakers. I have the offer that I want to offer him. And I said, guess what? I'd like you to be our general manager. And I made him the money offer and he says, uh, yes. So in other words, it was an offer you couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Very shoot, true. what a blessing, you know? I yeah. mean, this guy's a gift from God, bro. So what you were looking for was somebody with all of his qualities, but also somebody that can make the customer, as you said, customer service is number one. Yes. Make the customer feel just as important as the VIP person as the person that maybe doesn't have enough money yet to pay for the VIP. Yes. I, I've lived by this motto, and my grandfather taught it to me when I was eight years old. And it's, I treat the everyday Joe and Jill like a VIP and VIPs like God, but it's the everyday Joe and Jill that if you greet them with a hug, you remember his or her first name when they come in, they'll work all week long to bring in their paycheck on the weekend. Yep. And he had the same mentality as me in that regard. And that's everything. Cause everybody wants to go and be treated like a somebody. Cause you know, like a lot of stuff, a lot of times you go somewhere and they look right past you like, Oh, you, you know, that guy doesn't have any money. Oh, that guy yeah. has money. Come on, come on in. But yet you can't judge a book by the, by its cover. So I want everybody, whether you're spending $100 or $10,000, to feel like a somebody and have a great experience. And you'll keep coming back. Yes. And because, you know, when you only, you know, say you have to save up to go to your club, right? Yes. So you, only, you, you save for 500 bucks. Yes. You finally get one of your boys or your girls and you take them in. Yes. And they know your name. Yes. Now, right off the bat. You know, yeah. you, you got a good shot with the girl if you're bringing a girl yeah. or you look really cool with your boy. Right. Because, like, man, I just went to Spirit and Rhino. The, the door guy knows my name. Right. This person, the DJ knows my name. Right. I'm going back there. Right. And I'm saving 500 more to come back. Right. Every dollar counts. And then what happens, Tony, and I'm sure you, you agree. I know you agree. I know both of you agree. I'm the, I'm the peanut over here mm -hmm. that they tell other people. Exactly. Hey, I went to Rhino. They knew my fucking name. They knew where I like to sit. Yes. I only had 500 hours. I wasn't the guy in the back with, with the five grand and the, the grand for the hour in the back. You know, I only had 500 bucks and they know my name. Right. Now right. he says that quietly to his boy who goes and rats him out, of right. course, right? Right. But, you know, that's what everybody wants when they go there. And it's not right. like that. What When you go out to places like that you got, it's like you're a mark. So right. the doorman, the security, the manager, the girl, they're looking for the mark. Who's the mark? They're not looking at everybody equal like you're trying to push. Yes. But what they fail to realize that I think you do is that it's not just about that. Because even though that guy might only have 500, if he tells 10 of his friends to tell 10 more of his friends, now you got 500 people. Yes. Well, that equals more than that one guy in the VIP that comes every other week yes. and spends five grand, right? Is that yeah. kind of the strategy behind it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. so I mean, that's... There's power in numbers. That's awesome. I love yeah. the clicker thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. you like that's, that? That's one? badass. Yeah. Nobody I, nobody really knows that I do that. That's a, my grandfather did it. Yeah, that's why I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my grandfather, too. Yeah, 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 he'd have one in his pocket, and he, he 
he would do everything, but it was usually to pick up girls. Like, <laughs> like he, he would sit somewhere when he was hitting on a girl, like, okay, she got coffee. Yeah. She got two cups. Yeah. Like, like crazy uh, shit. Like, I mean, this yeah. is back in the forties. Back in the day. Yeah. Fifties when he was picking, you know, yeah. old school. Cause he was a mailman. Okay. And then he'd click and see how long it would take for people to open their door to get the mail when he came. Nice. And if she was real quick to open the door, yeah, he'd have like a sheet that was fucked up, like one of those yellow legal papers. Right. And he really would. He would put it down, and then he knew what girl he thought he had a chance to hit on. Yeah. And that's then back awesome. then you could touch somebody. Right. And, right. and he'd be like, hey, you know, do you want a massage? I'm really good with massage. And back then in the 70s, it wasn't a big deal, right? Right, right, right. So he'd have a clicker, and he'd be like, okay, uh, Cheryl's good at. At 566, you know, North Brawl Street, you yeah. know, and he'd hit on him. He was smooth. He yeah. was smooth, yeah. But he, he had the clicker that had, it was a clicker. It almost looked like a stamp. And you click it, and it had four things that rolled around. Oh, that's The old awesome. school one. That's you know awesome, I mean? yeah. Okay, so that's how you get with him. Yeah. The big guy gets you him. You, you get an offer that you can't refuse. You take it. Right. Now, what made you decide West Palm? Why not Texas? Why not? Arizona what what was it about West Palm that made you want to make a move here West Palm's open and it's beautiful yeah it's really beautiful you know who else is open Arizona Arizona's open too yeah my buddy it, lives over but there. it doesn't have DeSantis it doesn't have DeSantis, DeSantis You're right. is phenomenal. phenomenal what a governor this state has monster I want to meet him I want to shake his hand yep. he is the man he is the man and yeah. I heard from from pretty, pretty really legitimate guys, the Santos and Trump twenty twenty four. Ooh, the Santos VP, Trump president. Wow, like from a guy that goes to lunch with him. Wow, that goes to lunch with Trump. That'd be over fantastic. here in Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, yeah. I don't see Trump losing. He's not really the type of guy that loses and just says okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I don't see it. And after this guy fucking buries everything for four years, well. Harris buries everything for four years, and then Pelosi's the VP. You guys better get this fucking thing moving. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pelosi, your vice president? Oh. Bro, you better, I don't know what you got to take, but you better get moving. <laughs> wow, no kidding. Yeah, for sure. So now your your first company was Runaway Chronicles. You worked there earlier, right? Yeah, I, I worked there, and uh, it was a television show. Yeah, you had a, a reality show, right? It was a reality show, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was in charge of the entertainment. So, so what what did you do there? I uh, I helped develop the entertainment and recruited the entertainers and guys and girls and that nature. Now, was that was that a, div- a reality show? What year was that? Oh, shoot. I saw it on the thing. Was it 01? Uh, yeah, it was quite a while ago. Um uh, so that wasn't really a big thing right then, right? Uh, Pull up the Chronicle. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. But it was, it, like, all my life, I've been in the club business. All my life. I mean, uh, at eight years old, I uh, I started with my grandpa. My grandpa had a bar in Arizona. And uh, I grew up in Linwood, California. And where I grew up, with, it wasn't very happy. And so I went one summer to uh, my grandfather's bar out in Arizona. It's called the Spirit Room. It's actually still there today, the Spirit Room. Is it really? Yeah, it's in a ghost hotel. Spirits meaning ghosts, spirits meaning liquor. That's pretty cool. And he puts me on the bar, and everybody was happy there. And I told him, this is what I want to do. So at eight years old, I knew that I wanted to be in the bar club world. Everybody happy having a good time. Everybody happy. And that's what kind of set you on. That's what set me on pace from then on. Club world, bar world, my whole life. So this was just a little swing out of the realm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I di- what I did here was just helped develop the entertainment, girls, guys. That was my buddy Jody's project. It was pretty fun. We had a good time. So now you would recruit people for the show. Yeah, was that kind of yeah. like your day to day operations? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fun. Well, when did you leave there? Do you remember? Because they haven't posted anything since No, it's been a while. It's been a while. Now, did that uh, uh, reality show, did that go to regular TV? No. It never it never went there? It never went big, no. 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 So you did that, and then the next thing after that, it looks like it was in between productions, right? In between, well, what I got involved in also was raves. 
So, oh, yeah. so, that was big at that time. So when I was 13 years old, Holy shit. I got involved in raves. At 13? At 13 in Los Angeles. I didn't I didn't even know. At 13? 13. I'm not going to ask you because it's an yeah. Italian thing. But, <laughs> but, but well, you look you look about 39. I wish. So, <laughs> so let's just say uh, yeah. 20 years ago, 30 <laughs> years ago. The rate, no, I mean, 30 years ago. I, I mean, that was fun. And then at 16, uh, at 16, I got a fake ID <laughs> and I started a company. Uh, and we were actually the first company that opened up the nightclub Florentine Gardens in Hollywood. Did it really? And it's still there. Wow. It's still there, you guys. Florentine Gardens. Did you open it up? We were the prom uh, the promotion company that opened it up. We put 2,000 people in there on a Friday and 2,000 people in there on a Saturday. That's awesome. Yeah. 16 years old. And they, thought still, I was, wow. they thought I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> you, have a you have a fake ID. Shit. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. So, wait, so yeah. like when you look at this, you see like, okay, you do the reality thing. You kind of learn a little bit of how to recruit. Yeah. Like I'm kind of mapping out like how you got to where you were, right? So you, you do the reality thing. You kind of learn how to – or you, I guess, learn or, or – or experiencing the recruiting of people, whether it went yes, national or it, not. It's all people. It's all people. Everything's relationships, the way I look networking, at life. Networking, right? Yes, everything's networking. Then you get into this, and here you're kind of learning, like, the advertising part of it, the promoting part of it, right? Yeah, yes, yes. And now how long were you with them for? Um, the, the gentleman there, uh, Jody, Jody Sigmund, I actually became the editor of Skinny Magazine, which is a magazine for the the like fun lifestyle of Southern California. So if you keep scrolling, you'll see that that that, that keep going. There's Jody right there to the right with the glasses on. Yeah. yeah. So good guy, very very good guy. Now is he still running it? Uh, no, he's actually in Bali now, and he's he's got another marketing company doing well. But he's sharp. But every everything is relationships. When you're in a nightclub world, it's all about relationships. Your relationships are your capital. You know, uh, you're only as good as your relationships. And so in the nightclub world, you want to have those relationships. It's like being a casino host or a VIP host in Vegas. You're only as good as your relationships. And that's what you bring to the table for the club. Because... When you come, who else comes because you're there? And that's like with Legato and those people shaking his hands and giving him hugs on Clematis. I thought when he's there, easily 20 people will be there, let alone if he does a full-blown promotion. Hundreds of people will be there. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. But just because he's been there these last, last what, three weeks? Yeah. Every night, at least 20 people come. Just because he's there. Just because. Yeah. Just because he's there. So... Once we get the club all remodeled and we actually start doing promotions and productions, it'll be packed. Yeah, it'll be huge. Yeah. So you're remodeling the whole thing? Yes. Yes, remodeling the whole thing, making it all brand new again. And how? what's your ETA on that? Uh, I'd probably say six weeks. No, wow, that's fast. I'm talking sound system, lighting system, repaint the whole place, all new booths, air conditioning, uh, new VIP rooms, new VIP rooms, uh, suites, lanterns, chandeliers, you name it. Bathrooms, everything. Yeah, their, their booths sucked. Yeah. Their, their chandeliers sucked. Their bathrooms sucked. Yeah. I mean, it was a shithole. I mean, it, it was cool for its day. It was cool for its day, right? For yeah. its day. Yeah, yeah but not today. <laughs> I, I think, what, maybe like seven, six years ago, well, maybe five years ago. That was kind of like the, it was like a cheetahs. It, w it was looked at as like a cheetahs. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. like you have like the Monroes, the Rachels. Yeah. And then it was double Ds, and then that turned into Mayors now, I think. And they were kind of like the higher, and then the Spearman Rhino was kind of like, eh, maybe. But now we got Tony in. Well, the whole, the goal is, is to where it's in that same category as yeah. cool and yeah. fun. And we, it might not be have millions and millions and millions in the build out, but it's going to be cool and fun. And that's all that matters. Yeah. People yeah. are going to know that they go there and have a nice experience. Yeah. yeah. And you got him pushing it. Oh, you aren't kidding. I got the guy. Yeah. He do. is the guy. And I think he'll be worth every penny you're spending. Oh, and then some. Because it, it will speed up 
the capital gains quick. Yes, you know? yes, well. yes. And he and he knows how to treat people. Yeah. He's kind to everybody, all walks of life, young, old, skinny, fat, pretty, homely, everybody. He's cool to everybody. He doesn't he doesn't downgrade anybody, which is beautiful. I've actually sat just sat back and watched him and he's really super. Yeah, I can tell you're very observant. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, He's good. Look at him. He he's just sitting there. Yeah. Just you know. Yeah. I'm letting yeah. him tell the story. Yeah, yeah. I know, but <laughs> set up. But set but up. you know when you revert to you know why he picked you. Right. Because most people can't just sit there because they got to be like, yeah, I'm the fucking man experiment yeah. now. You know, like a cocky asshole. Yeah. You don't want that. Right. No. But you see how relaxed and calm. Yes, he's, he's like, humble. And that's that's hard to find. Yes. Especially Tony in South Florida, humble and loyal. Fuck. Forget about you it. You find me ten, I'll give you fifty grand right now in <laughs> cash. Wow. Yeah. Ten. But the problem is, Tony, we gotta wait five years oh, because wow. the way they are here. Yeah. They're snakes. They'll wait three, four, five. They'll wait till they just have that opening and then bite. Then bite you. And before you know it, they bit you, and then you got a choice to make. You know, wow. do you do you just say fuck it and say, look, well, you're too stupid, Tony or Tom, to not realize that this guy was a snake. Yeah. Or you know, do you punish him? It's right. funny because you say uh, it takes 10 and then you give them 50 grand and it only for me, it took two that been with me over 10 years to not mention my name, but actually tell him, hey, we used to do stuff there. They didn't have to bring that up. I haven't done stuff at the Rhino in over 10 years. But the fact that the city knows what I used to do 10 years ago and the city knows where I'm at now and how I've treated the city, um, they're coming back like wildfire. Especially after they know who's who's the GM now. Well, that would mean that you made a, a statement. You know, you, you you put your mark. You know, so they're going to remember because now you got these other guys coming in, and that's not DJ Legato. Right. Right. So right, right. You, obviously you made your mark because there's plenty of DJs around here. Imagine yeah. this: I took a Monday night in the biz night. It was doing eight hundred dollars every Monday before I started about ten years ago. Yeah. And I turned it into uh, between we were averaging like seven and nine grand on a Monday. So yeah. now you got the guy who comes into town and gives me the opportunity to do that seven days a week. Forget Scary. about it. Forget about it. Scary. Yeah. He was when he was in here uh, the first time I met him. Yeah. He was telling that. W was that the club you were talking about where they you went there and you were there? You were a fill in. I think you were just like, like a fill in one night and you filled in on like a Tuesday. And you brought in like more people than they had ever had. Yeah. And then. But it was a Monday instead. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Monday. yeah it's been yeah, yeah, three yeah. episodes. No, since no, 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 no. Yeah. No, so no, no. and it was like nobody really going there. It was like twenty people. Yeah. He comes in the first time. He brings you know two fifty people, three hundred. Then you know they hire him. I guess what part time. And it was it was like a fucked up night that they put you on, right? Where like people usually don't come. Yeah. yeah. And he brought two thousand people. Yeah. Well, the third week. Yeah, I mean, we were something. doing numbers like that. Uh, Rhino's not big enough to hold that many people, but the, the sales were going up into the thousands. And they, like, literally couldn't believe it. And it was actually another manager at the time that gave me that opportunity. I proved myself then. And then for some reason, uh, they wanted to let it go. And it wasn't because we weren't making money. It was for other reasons that people didn't understand the route that I knew the city wanted to hear. So if you're not listening to a local, and this is something that I told Tony when we first met, the scary thing is you want to talk about God's will is that I, everybody who knows me in Palm Beach knows that I went to L.A. for eight months before COVID. I was telling you about that, too. Mm -hmm. I've only been there for eight months. I was working in the nightlife and DJing in all these clubs. This guy comes over from the West Coast and we start naming the same people. In eight and months. That, that just makes it click right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in eight months, he's I'm telling him about, you know, other managers who I was trying to DJ for, but I couldn't because COVID and the club was closed. And he's like, yeah, I put him on and I made him a manager. And you're you were you were networking with the right people. So I was doing the right things in a new city to create my name in a new city. But because of what happened, you know, with COVID and everything, I had to come back home for this guy to go from the West Coast to the East Coast. Meet me here in my hometown where for over 10 years I've been telling these clubs these ideas and nobody wanted to give me that shot for him to be like, I think just like you. And he just and Tony <laughs> just floated into town. And, yeah. And that was what you've been looking for, really. Yeah. But I but I 
to that, I was blown away that he went in three weeks. Yeah. To, you know, 25, 50 people to thousands. Or, I, I mean, there yeah. was over a thousand people. I, yeah. I forget the exact number, but I mean, it was like, and it was a shit night, Tony. It wasn't like it was a yeah. night where people really are out. Yeah. What was yeah. it? I'm sorry, Monday. It was sorry, Monday. Sorry, Monday. Not Tuesday. You know, uh, <laughs> I can reiterate on that as well is in the month that we've been here, that I've been here and he's been with me. We've doubled uh, what the last six months average has been. I bet you did. And we're under construction and we're revamping the team and rebuilding the team and retraining the team into a, a different mentality. The mentality is get to yes, be kind to customers, whether they're going to spend a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, be kind, you know? Now, when you, when you went into the training and you saw how they were training people, did your yeah. head about pop off? <laughs> Did you have to go pick your head up off the ground? Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm into kindness. Yeah, I really, I, I really preach peace, love, and kindness, and and fun. And um, I don't drink or anything, so my energy is I enjoy seeing people have fun. Right, that's like my thrill. I really enjoy that a lot. Again, old school. Yeah, not many of you around left. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that mentality. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's just not the 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 way it is anymore i know so what was the story that you were about to tell me before we came on that uh anthony had brought up what's that oh uh he doesn't drink yeah but if it was so funny because he just got into town and we go to a super bowl party and i'm like i'm asking him i'm we he wanted he loves scenery so obviously with him moving to palm beach i want to show him the very you know nice spots taken by the water you know, he's going to be here for a while. So, um, and Super Bowl night, I had a party. He came to listen to me, uh, you know, play music in Miami. We've been going all over South Florida. Together. Sorry. How about Brady? Oh, oh Brady's man. a beast, bro. Oh, the man. best. The best ever. Fourth quarter. Oh, bullets. 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 Right on the mark. Spiral. Yep. At what, 42? 43. 43. Yeah. And he got hit more this year than I've seen him get hit in his whole career. Yep. Yeah. And that last quarter, when you yeah. know he brought Gronk in, yeah, he was throwing with bullets. How at awesome 42. was that, dude? I loved it. Yeah, he crazy. is the man. He's the hot man. chick, the best. <laughs> Every girl thinks he's hot, even if they say they don't think he's hot. He's they hot. think he's hot. Yeah, yep. He's forty-two, throwing bullets. monster bullets yeah. in the fourth quarter after playing a full season, getting hit more than he ever got hit, and just fucking them up. And the odds, you know, in Vegas yeah. were. I, KC was what? Yeah. They were what? Plus six? They, seven? they were up there? Yeah, like touchdown and, favorite. And that, you know, uh, what's his name? What's the quarterback's name? Uh, from uh, Mahone. Mahone? Yeah, Patrick. Everybody's Mahone, Mahone, Mahone. He made him look like a little girl with little the diaper boy. on. Boy. Yeah. You don't mm. play with Buck and Brady. No. Sorry. I just like Brady. I mean, a lot. think about that for a second. The Patriots didn't make the Super Bowl, <laughs> didn't make the playoffs. I know. Okay. So Brady goes in, he takes us like an average subpar ish kind of team to the best. Right. I mean, what does that say? New team, new offense. Yeah. And if you look, they didn't have in the first half of the season, they didn't have anybody there on the right blocking. Yeah. That's why he was getting fucking hammered. He was getting blindsided. Yeah. And yeah. they put one in, not good, but gave him another half a second. And you give a guy like Brady a half a second, he'll he'll just beat you to death. Yeah. 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 He didn't uh Rob, he didn't think Brady could pull it off, did he? <laughs> no sir. No, sir. <laughs> and, 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 I was rooting against him very hard. Oh, and, wow. and what happened? He just, he punished you is what he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he punished my you. My Eagles beat him a few years ago, so I'm happy. He's, oh. he, he's a big Eagles fan. <laughs> Got it. I Got liked it. the Eagles until Donathan McNabb fucked everything up. Oh man. Remember, I was at Dave and Buster's in Philly when that happened. Wow. In Philly when it happened. Yeah, oh, man. I was living there. Yeah. yeah. But sorry, I didn't interrupt you. But That's Brady, okay. I, man, that man's a, football's always a good talk. He yeah. is. A, beast yeah so we're going out and i'm wondering i'm yeah. oh yeah we spoke about that yeah uh him and kobe love kobe work ethic crazy you aren't kidding beautiful we are going out um super bowl night and i'm wondering he just like hey take me somewhere after the gig did and sometimes we're having so much fun when we're out together i forget that he doesn't drink so <laughs> I, I finally finally i'm like uh hey man what are we celebrating today he was just celebrating i could tell he was celebrating something super happy just like and i was like and he tells me uh super bowl is actually the date that he celebrates and you could you could finish it 
uh, being clean and sober. That's awesome. Yeah. For how many years? Uh, some like fifteen. That's crazy. <laughs> huh? Fifteen years, no drinking. <laughs> Nothing. What made you stop? My son. Yeah. I want to be a good role model. Yeah. 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 Was it tough to stop? Nah, not really. No, no what's wrong? Nah, just one day said enough's enough. You have a kid now. It's yeah. It's done. Yeah. I want to be a good role model. Yeah. Yeah. Get you a lot of shit. <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> you know, being in the industry, uh, you get caught up in it sometimes. You know. And especially all the things that you're doing, you got to be aware at all times. All times. All yeah. times. Yeah, I work uh, day and night, and I try to be really observant. You know, so can't really do that when you're drinking. Right. Anything that clouds your mind can, yeah. can fuck it up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm on the non-drinking phase right now too. I I rotate. I'll do. Yeah. I'll drink for a little bit and then I stop. And I'm much clearer when I don't drink at all. But mm. then I like calming down. But, yeah. You know. That's but, cool. Yeah. But congratulations. That's a long time. And then Thank being you. in that bar scene. Shit. Thank you. I don't know how you do that. Big respect. Thank yeah, you. Big respect on that one. Thank you very much. So it's been about 15 years. Yeah. 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 Now, now, what do you you uh, open Dre's After Hours Club and that's in. That's in Vegas. That's in Vegas. Yeah. I wanted to ask you that. So now when you are here, you've been here a month? Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the biggest difference between Vegas and here? Are we talking I would pre say now or pre-COVID? I, I better say pre-COVID. Yeah, because like what's you can't cool. can't really compare right, it. Right, because yeah. it's, it's open here. Yeah. So this has such is a... Is Vegas shut down? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I didn't think they were. I mean, uh, we... Did you know that? All the clubs in Vegas are shut down. What? The, the strip clubs are at all these COVID uh, restrictions. So like our Rhino there is only open Thursday, Friday, Saturday. With a curfew? With a curfew, yeah. How do they expect, like how does, like you're in this heavy. Yeah. How does Vegas and California and a couple of, how do they expect people to recover from this even a big company like rhino like even a man i don't care how much money you got right on a daily you're still paying the rent yep, right still paying rent mortgages S mortgages the electric yes, you yes. got kids you got your own bills living that high life because you know how yeah. how do these governors mayor whoever the fuck they are how do they expect this to work i actually don't think they do i They're think not i think i control. i i my philosophy is: I think they want to do away, do away with the middle class. It's, you know, I never thought about it that way. You know, they want to make the middle class poor, and have the rich richer, and the middle class poor, and not have the middle class anymore. And then you have all control. Then right? they have full control. Because in order to get rich, you would have to deal with them. Yeah. Because so. if you're shutting everything down, and I'm a, I'm asking you because you're a big business owner, you shut everything down. Then you want to raise the minimum wage to fifteen dollars an hour. Right. How do you survive in that? Okay. So how do you do that? Right. You shut the things down. You put a curfew on. A club to a curfew is like, I mean, that's just a knife in the in the heart, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, look at how many clubs if it not going to ever open again in America. It's so sad. How many restaurants aren't going to open again in America? How sad that is. Right. And what about the mom and pop shops? That's what I mean. That've been in generations for right. hundred years. Right. For hundred years. And it's then, so sad. And then on top of that, he wants to raise the taxes on the people that are making money that hire the people for ten dollars an hour, with scale. Right. So That's as a business fair. owner, uh, and I, I have another business that I own. I would just buy a fucking robot, right. twenty five grand one time with a warranty. Right. The hell do I need Legato for? Now, I mean, I, I'm saying that figuratively, yeah, not yeah, in this yeah. situation, but right. in like a McDonald's situation or another type of atmosphere where it's not so much about customer interaction. Right. And then you do all that, then you're going to raise the taxes on the company that owns it as if 39, 40% isn't enough. So now let's say this asshole makes it 45%. So now half of your net income goes to them. Mm -hmm. Then you got to pay 15 an hour, which the next thing will be ma they'll mandate benefits. Yeah. That'll be another thing with the $15 an hour. Then you just take out 1.9 trillion, print money like it's falling off of a fucking tree, which is inflation out the ass, mm -hmm. which is a bubble that's gonna pop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Then you got this Bitcoin bullshit. Everybody in this dumb fucking Bitcoin. Wow. Well, you got to cash the Bitcoin out into a fucking dollar some way. Some way. Because the government is not going to allow you to spend Bitcoin. Because right. they, they're so not back. So how are they going to do that? Okay, so now what happens is you you say, okay, well, I'm going to buy Bitcoin. It's safe that way. Well, it's not safe if the if inflation happens because somehow you have to turn that into cash, right? Right. So you're going to get knocked withdrawing it from Coinbase or the Bitcoin company, the exchange. Yep, right. And then today it's at 50K, but when the dollar, the value of the dollar goes to shit right. because of inflation, right. now it's not 50K anymore. What is it? <laughs> it's, it's dog shit. And then the government says, well, the IRS, who is not to be fucked with, which all, all of us know in here, we do not fuck with the IRS. Nope. Other things fine, but not them. Not them. They are not the one you want after right. you. Yeah, no. And I'm sure they've, had, they've about had it with this crypto shit. So then they're going to come in with their own crypto. Right. Which is the backing of Bitcoin, but it will be like Fed crypto. Well, mm -hmm. now what is Bitcoin? Because now Fed crypto is the on, crypto. Your, on your uh, merchant at Rhino. It's on yeah. the merchant at Publix. It's yeah. at the mer right. Now Bitcoin is nothing. Right. So now you lost your life savings. You lost your 401k. The only one who survives that is, you know, a guy that has a couple hundred million in the bank and says, fuck it, I'm going to drop a quarter mil and see what happens. Yeah. But the people that save their money for years and think that, oh, it's it's 50 now, it's going to go to 100. Wow. You better go back and look and fucking do your research. You aren't kidding. The market going up like crazy just dropped the other day. Yeah. Remember Brandon? We Tony, we had this guy in. Yeah. His name's Brandon. He hit 300K on Tesla. I don't know if you look at stocks. So I, it's gambling to me, so I, I right. fucking hate it. But he just bought it, bought enough shares, and it popped up in August of last year. Uh -huh. And it went from whatever it went. He made 300K on it. Good for him. You know, uh, a hedge, hedge yeah. bet. Got it. Gets the 300K, takes half of it, puts it towards shit he owed. The other half he kept in. Mm -hmm. Lost it all oh, last shit. week. Because wow. some it went down real bad the one day lost lost it all and actually owed in because he did it through Robin Hood wow. he actually owed in eleven thousand now he's negative eleven thousand wow cutting hair wow and my example of that is just how fucked up things are are yeah. just slowly going to be you know it's so yeah. tough right now but we're in Florida yeah so we're good as long as they just stay over there right yeah. Florida's open and it's fun. Right. And anybody in those closed states come to Florida. Florida is open and fun and beautiful. Well, it's like New York City now, so they're coming. That's why the traffic. I mean, the traffic's bad, but it's bad. Yeah, they're coming from all over the country Everybody. to Florida. Hell yeah. Yeah. And they could put whatever mandate they want on DeSantos. He's going to go like this. He yeah. already did. But he and he'll continue to. Yeah. Yep. But the one thing, Tony, they got a fucking curfew on the island. This is like the breakers is right down the road here. Okay. If you kept going straight, you uh -huh. run into the breakers where you and um, Anthony went? Yeah, for dinner. This whole side here has a 1, to f 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. curfew. Oh, I didn't even know that. It's the only place around, right? Yeah, so West Palm, the other side, has no curfew. No curfew. It's wide open. But on Palm Beach Island, hmm. over here. Why do you think that? Uh, because the money's over there. The and big yeah, money. Yeah, you got Pacino lives down the street. Oh, okay. You got Who else lives down there? Uh, got it. Stallone, just Stallone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard yeah. about that. Why yeah, he, he has a town? summer house down there. It's like there. everybody okay. knows that. Yeah, he's been making his way around to restaurants and stuff. Support local business. So, like, we're at the end, but if you kept going straight down this road, right. you'd see houses. How much do you think those houses are? 50 million, 100 million? Wow. I mean, for, what, a mile long? Howard Stern has a house over there. Yeah, Howard wow. Stern's down here. That's awesome. So, it's it's probably due to the... The big, big, big yeah, money. Yeah, the, the island thing. But uh, West Palm, you can be out all night, right? Wide yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. Have Anthony take it. I don't know if you know the houses, but you go half a mile down, three quarters of a mile. Yeah. All these people have these, like, summer homes. And Tony, I mean, they got to be. You, you've lived here. You, how much are they worth, Rob? For real, I'm just guessing at 50 million. Tony, wow. fucking. That's awesome. The landscaping must be 50 million. Yeah, Could you imagine houses. the crew they have to have to just run those places? And then, and then the county has mandates where you have to keep things cut. You, ha you know, you have to have the bushes this wow. inch by this inch. Yeah, wow. You see their grass over there? Their grass is the most man. I think people take, like, scissors to cut the grass to manicure. It's wow, that is that perfect, huh? Yeah. But wow. 100, $100 million homes. Howard Stern's house is probably over oh, yeah, 100 million. Sure. Without a doubt. I don't think there's a house. When you go down half a mile, worth less than $100 million. Wow. Maybe one, like, right on the break. All $100 million plus All 100 houses. Million, probably. How many do you think, Anthony? 50? 
Yeah, for sure. Oh, 50 you, on the you left side. You got to take me over there so I can right see here. that. That's right. awesome. When you leave here, you'll, if you go out this way and just go right, yeah. you'll be like, what the fuck? Seriously. And then I, I kept, I always tried to figure out who the fuck lives in there. Because nobody, and the, and the craziest thing is, yeah. nobody's ever there. Wow. I see them like two months out of year. Fucking hundred right. million dollars. So seasonal, right? And it, it's not like on Airbnb. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, these yeah. are big, big houses. Wow. And they're yeah. just letting sit there and then they come wow. a couple months out of the year. That's awesome. So luckily we're down here. Yeah. So we're and you're over there. We're blessed. So you have that going on in LA, mm -hmm. right? The Dre's, mm -hmm. but that's close. Uh, that actually, that that's not mine. I I uh, created that. You created it. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's now actually the longest running nightclub in Vegas history. Wow. And it'll be around forever and a day. It's 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 the shit. Now, do you have, you have hands on on that? No, 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 no. You sold it? No, 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 no. I I, uh, I had a promotion deal oh. and I promoted it and got it cracking and it's cracking. Oh, I see. You you yeah. you stepped in. You got it to where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, then... yeah. I I uh. I kind of do what is called nightclub rescue. Yeah. You know, go around fixing clubs around the country and making them uh, little gold mines. So now, did you buy Rhino? Or no, you no, just, no, no, okay, no. Okay, that's where no, I, no, okay, no, so no. I thought you owned it. No, 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 no. Not no. me, not me, not me. Okay, so you're just into I'm just the Rhino. janitor. I clean up the mess. Now, <laughs> now, if you can't answer this, it's okay. Don't answer it. Now, when you clean up the mess, do you take a vig with you? No, no, no. No, you don't take a big? No, no, no. Oh, come on, Tony, you got to no. take a little bit of a kickback? No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. So you just fix it up? I, just, I fix it up, make it profitable, put together an honorable team, and uh, on to the next one. But if you do it like that, how do you bank on that? You know, it, it's not so much the money for me as it is the excitement of seeing people happy and bringing good people together and doing things honorably. I really like things honorably. I live by a code, and uh, I don't break that code for so anybody. So that, that's your money. That's my money. That's your money. That's my money. Yeah. And challenge, too. Yes. I, I could see the competitive in your eyes. Yeah, I could yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The challenge. Like, you called it a shithole. Do you know how many people have called that club here in West Palm a shithole to me? Yeah. Over 20. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, hey, you know. But, but what a better one to clean up. Right, right, right. right. Cause Cause you one day you're not going to say that. Right, because you want. Am I right though that you want the worst, so that when I when you bring a guy like him, that they're gonna follow him, even if it is a shithole and there's a cockroach on the ground. Right, like last weekend. I mean, believe it or not, last Saturday we had 175 people. I we we doubled it from the previous Saturday. Yeah. You know, and I expect those same numbers tonight and tomorrow. You know. And that's a shit ton in a club like and, that. Right, and we're under construction. <laughs> one of the, the one of the bathrooms thing. is completely gutted down to the studs. So we have the la the the ladies going in our VIP bathroom and the men going in the ladies bathroom, <laughs> and, and still half the club is painted, and the other half's all fucked up. <laughs> but it's gonna be nice. It's gonna yeah. be nice. Like I said, probably six eight weeks. It'll be nice. But that's cool because they'll follow him. No matter yes. Why. Oh, they love him. He and then and then when you go into a shit one, like you, there's a like I said, like a cockroach or whatever. But you're there just. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't, we don't have those. We don't have. No, no. Like, <laughs> no, no. Like, like hypothetically, there was yeah. whenever I was. In, but yeah. I'm just saying, if you go into a club that had cockroaches and ants on your glass. Yeah. But then he goes, so then they follow because of him. Yeah. And then in two months they come back and they go, whoa, what the fuck yeah, happened? Yeah, that's here? gonna be awesome. So you want the shittiest one in a way, right? It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. So what all do you have going on in uh, Vegas? In Vegas, you got a lot of shit going on. Over there. We have a uh, we have a real big spearmint rhino there, real big, and uh, we're looking for the the city to open and let us open it because we just actually remodeled it, and made it twice as big, and then barely got to really use it, and then COVID hit. So we're using only like a small percentage of the club right now in Vegas. And so, who's that mayor out there? Uh, that the, yeah, the, the mayor's good. Good. Mayor Goodman. But the, the governor, he, Sisolak, he he's... Sisolak? Yeah, he he's, uh, he's doesn't want to open. Do you think that's because of the California guy's influence on him? Yeah, probably. Because if he doesn't... Because if he wouldn't open up, then he'd make California guy look like more, even more of an asshole. Right, and it's only, you know, a four or five hour drive from California. Yeah. 
do you see them opening up anytime soon or you think it's going to uh, be a long I think it's going to be a minute yeah I think I think uh, California and Las Vegas is Nevada is going to be a minute maybe so you're even getting, this year so you're getting killed there yeah Los Angeles is totally shut down totally shut down listen to what they're doing to people in Los Angeles if your club is open and they tell you to stop and you continue to keep going they are taking your liquor license so what good is a club without a liquor license there's no point and then underground clubs have been opening and they're shutting off their water and their power wow yeah so literally los angeles nothing they don't want anything and, and do you think that's control or do you think this asshole really actually believes this shit? control control i mean come on where did the flu go yeah. Where did bronchitis go? Where where did pneumonia go? Well, no, no, no. Nobody gets the flu anymore. Bronchitis. Right. It's COVID. Everything's COVID. Give me the 13k kickback from when I when I coded. You know, in the system. Tony, you got a cough. You got fucking COVID. Yeah. Hey, uh, put that in as COVID. Send it to the insurance, the Fed. We get the ten, right, thirteen thousand right. dollar kickback. Right. Yeah. You don't hear about the flu this year. Right. The fuck happened to the flu? What it just disappear? Yeah. Well, now every every sniff, cough, and everything is COVID. They get they get a kickback like oh, crazy. Yeah. I believe in choice if you want to go go out go out if you want to stay home stay home if you want to wear a mask wear a mask if you don't don't i agree with it you because know? you know the risk going out there right yeah so if you have a pre-existing condition and you want to go out yeah okay and if you don't and you want to go out yeah. okay it's up to you sure now if you have you know stage four cancer right i would hope you have the, the brain to not go out but if you do that's your choice because, okay, so maybe I have stage five cancer, right? Right. I'm going to die in five weeks. Maybe I want to go see some tits and ass. Maybe you want to rock start for five weeks. <laughs> right. Like, like, why can't I go out? Go to Legato's Club. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'll go out with in my little wheel, my cane and my oxygen tank. Yeah. And look at some tits and ass for the last four see weeks of my life. the girls, yeah. What the fuck? But because of this prick, I got to sit in my house and die looking at a TV. Yeah, how sad is that? That some people haven't seen their grandparents like in a year, you know? Yeah. That's or if somebody sad. dies and you can't go oh, there. Oh, so sad. You know, my friend was out there and he said, everything, it's not just clothes, it's boarded up. Yeah, it's sad. And they're worried about fucking smog. I think they should be worried about a little bit more than fucking smog. You aren't kidding. Um, what's his name? You know, um, JR was out there. He made a quick trip, yeah. quick trip back. And he just happened to go look at the skid row. And that's bigger. And then there's another street that's like Skid Row, right? Well, tell me this. How come the Skid Row guys haven't died from COVID? <laughs> yeah. I said that even when I was in um, L.A. I was like, all this is going on. And what happened to like the people who are actually outside all the time? Skid Row is crazy, crazy. And obviously, they, they don't have the resources to stay safe, wear masks. They're just out. And they're all still out there. Yeah. Like, And they're not croaking. No. Right. At all. At all, I think it's just. A, I, I really think it's just like a flu, a flu that they I, weren't. I mean, sure it's about. A, it, it's a, to hit, it hit some people really bad. It's a bad flu. Yeah, but you know. But again, it, the reason to come to America is choice, right? Yeah. Yep. So, so now uh, you're the vice president of Serena Entertainment. Did I say that right? Uh, Sienna. 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 I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds pretty big. That was fun. That was fun. Are you still the VP? No, 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 no. That was fun. That was... Uh, yeah, tell me that experience. That was uh, doing VIPs all over Las Vegas, Los Angeles, New York, Miami, uh, hooking people up at all the different clubs. This is it, right? And like I said, it's... Yeah, that's my buddy Cam's creation. He's the uh, president. Super guy. Great guy. Refresh great guy. that, uh, Rob, please, because that's... And uh, that is is all about uh, taking care of people, you know, con concierge, luxury service, hooking people up at hotels, clubs, strip clubs, jets, limos, cars, the whole bit. So I would call you guys and yeah. I'd say, look, I need a car, I need a, I mean, so how would it work? You would call and say, hey, I want a weekend in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And we'd set it all up. We'd give you the itinerary A to Z. You'd be picked up at the airport. Oh, look at that. De de depending on your budget, you could be picked up in Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, 
whatever you wanted, you know. And best tables in Vegas, best tables in New York, best tables in Miami, best tables in Dallas. And that, and you, do you still have a good relationship with them? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, everybody I have a good relationship with. That's great, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. Great. Relationships are everything, you know. Yeah. The relationships are your currency. They, they help you no matter what city you're going to go to, you know. Yeah. You 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 need those relationships. Yeah, because you never know, right? You never know. Click on the um the travel one, the link there. Save on rooms. All right, I just want to see what they have going on there. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, but so that that's cool. Is that's pretty cool though. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's what everybody wants. You know, every every we tried to make it your one stop shop. Mm -hmm. You know, because so many people have no idea what they're going to do when they get to a city and so they're like uh we thought of we tried to think of everything to make it simple for you so how long were you uh promoting them to mm. get to get it to actually what I, a few years now was this one that you walked in and made better or it was already good oh it was already good okay yeah so you played around with it two years and then yeah. moved on from it yeah i mean you figure in the nightclub world in vegas this is a necessity because everybody goes to Vegas. Yeah. So it's a necessity to have that element. And they just close it to all of it. Yes. So this so obviously this is getting killed. Oh, killed. Killed. Yeah, I saw a lot cuz they have an Instagram too and I saw some of the hitters coming in there. Yeah. Whew, killed. Killed. Can you imagine how much they're losing on a Thursday to Sunday? Oh. Unbelievable. What do you think they're losing? <laughs> A lot. A lot. We'll just leave it at a lot, right? A lot. That's one of those ones that you, oh, you get It's so cringe. sad. It's so sad. I mean, COVID destroyed the industry that we're in. And I'm hoping and praying that we can come out of it strong in America. Yeah, but I mean, now you as a business owner for year, or being around business and yeah. promoting them for years, like how do they come back from this? Because... <sighs> Man. Because they probably have, I would assume, that they have leases right. on Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, yes. Ferrari. Yes. Not the Lamborghini Huracan. I'm sure they got the Aventador and right. the, all the big shit, you know. Yeah. And they're paying for that, right? I yeah, mean, I mean, all, like, what about what about the casinos nuts? <sighs> that their their monthly mortgage, their mm -hmm. their payroll, their kick, their everything, everything, everything. I mean. A city like Las Vegas, I mean, if this continues, that could wipe that city out. You know. I mean, I mean, can, at this point, do you think they could come back? It's going to take years, but they could. They could. I mean, if it, if this gets lifted here soon, it could. I mean, the city, the city could revive. Yeah, I really feel that. And how long do you think they have until there's no coming back? Oh gosh. I mean, you've been in this years. Yeah. Uh, what would, what's your educated guess oh man if we have another 2020 in 2021 it could be real bad yeah i don't know like you but i say if they keep things shut down for another six eight months Ooh, that's it yeah they got about three months to open everything up maybe four at three month mark this is my opinion yeah and you as the vet you tell me if i'm wrong on my my estimations all I'd right say you're close so man. i would say they got three months for any hope with any type of mom and pop shop and the only one that survives is ones that save their money, has some backing, whatever. Yeah. Three months, if they don't open this shit up, they're done. It doesn't matter who's backing you, yeah. how much money you got saved, it's over. Yeah. If it goes six months, the clubs Ooh. die. The clubs die. The yeah. hotels die. Any type of not franchise restaurant that's making a lot from other places right. dies. And they only stay just because... Eventually, it will open up and it will be there. Yeah. Nine months, eight, nine months, even the franchises pull out and say, fuck it. Because right. that whole nine months on top of the last nine months or right. six months, they're still paying that nut. Right. So I say nine months is done for. Three months, mom and pop. Six months, club and non-franchise places. Yeah. Nine months, done. Yeah, it's a scary thought, how isn't it? How close am I? I'd say you're very close. We had a guy in here. Who was in here, Rob, that they... Oh, you're going to... Oh, fucking Australia. Right? If you don't wear two masks... Now, I don't know if they actually give you the fine, but the threat is there on paper. Uh -huh. 
If you don't wear two masks in Australia, ten thousand dollar fine. Mm. And they're serious about it? No, no, we looked it up. Wow. Go, go, go you'll you'll fall over. Now imagine wow. having a fucking club there. Wow, you can't even survive that. Type in uh, Australia fine. Are you sure it was Australia? I don't think it was Australia. Yeah, uh uh we had a cool drummer in here. Oh, that's cool. He was a bad, and he, dude, he was bad. It, it was crazy, Tony, right? Because yeah. he looks all mean and shit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, fuck, this is going to be tough. Yeah. He's like this big fucking teddy bear. Oh, that's awesome. And he's like a heavy metal drummer. Yeah. Like heavy, heavy, but the nicest. Oh. And he's like six foot six. Oh, shoot. Like just. That's awesome. And he could do voiceovers. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, you got to hear it. Like, I'd like to. Like, you know, like uh, like movie commercials? Yeah. Yeah. He sounded just fucking like him. I'd like to get a drummer to hit Legato's music. I think that'd be so yeah, cool. I'll, I'll send you or him uh, yeah. the guy. Would no, you like that? Would you like that? That'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be dope. Dude, it's uh, Rustin uh, Gross. Rustin You'll Gross. see him, and and he looks... Big dude. Like, like, when you see him, he looks fucking crazy. Like it, It's like one of those things like, oh, boy, this is going to be tough to deal with. He's like a little kid. Hey, now, I'll tell you what. Not to toot Legato's horn, but he's... Arguably one of the best DJs I've heard, and I've been around the dudes in Vegas that get like a hundred thousand bucks for two hours. Yeah, I would put him up against anybody. So, anybody that wants a DJ challenge, step up. Legato's my man. And if this guy's saying this, this this guy's worldwide here, boy. <laughs> He's been in the game a long time. You got You got to get a little bit of a chub here and there from him. <laughs> yeah, Just a I little do. bit of a chub. Yeah, yeah. If He's you don't, good. I got a chub for you. And no homo. <laughs> Which if you're homo and you want to do your thing, go do it. But just you know. Yeah, that's whatever. It. No, that, that big uh, big respect when I hear him say that. And it might have been, been Singapore. Yeah, Singapore residents can get. Nah, put. Yeah, put two masks fine. Wow. I don't know where the hell. If you find it, let me know. But uh, it it was just interesting. They were the uh, on paper it was a ten thousand dollar fine to wear two. That's crazy. And I've had three people in here, out of I've done seventy one shoots. Yeah. And three people actually got respiratory infections from the germs coming into the mask. Oh yeah, sucking in your own carbon dioxide. Sucking in your own shit. Yeah. Three different guys had uh, like bad upper wow. respiratory infections from the mask. Wow. Yeah. And they want you to wear two. Mm. Well, you know you. I personally, I like to breathe oxygen. Yeah, I don't me like too. to breathe carbon dioxide. And then we had um, an EMT in and a, uh, uh, what was it, EMT in. We had a doctor in. We had a bunch. And all of them, all the ones that were willing to be honest, Yeah. you know, they had said that if if I touch this, there's germs on it, right? Sure. If my body doesn't know how to fight off those germs, if I'm wearing a glove all the time, every time I touch something, now I take the glove off and I touch it. And it's a foreign virus or whatever right my immune system has no way of knowing how to fight that off yeah. right if i have a mask on because COVID is through the nasal sure respiratory system sure if i never get in contact with that my immune system has no way of, of building up right it's it. weak right yeah so now when i do take the mask off or the nuts with the gloves and the fucking shields and they look like they're open like opening up a bomb squad yeah you know yeah. now they take their shields off which probably takes 15 minutes to get off their yeah. hazmat suit, yeah. 15. By the time they get all that shit off, yeah. you know, and they come in contact, they're going to get it. And you they're probably kidding. going to get one of those 10-day ringers. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. And those are the ones that, you know, are hurting people and yeah. even killing people. Fuck that mask. Yeah. Nah, fuck it. If I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. That's what right. I mean. And I take, you know, I know vitamin D3 is good for it. Uh, zinc. Sure. C. Vitamin D, little son, you know? Yeah. <laughs> fucking Christ. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you're locked in the fucking house, what are you going to do? Right. You're Jeez, fucked. Fuck Christ. Well, that's why Italy was like that. Because, you know, in Italy, everybody lives together. That's right. why it got so bad. These pricks tried to make it like they weren't taking care of themselves or they weren't, um, you know, separating. Yeah. Well, in Italy, I'm sorry. Five, you know, families live together for fucking, well, and so I'm from sicily right so you know cousins over there there's 10 of them in a fucking house yeah well if one gets it all fucking 10 are gonna get it right yep it's not because right. it was worse over there it's right. because of the the financial situation right and they're poor right yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. but how happy are they happy, as happy. Can be. isn't that beautiful and you know what they always want 
polo jeans. <laughs> really? That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. My cousins always ask me for polo jeans. Send me polo jeans from yep. America. That's huh? all they want. And they're so fucking happy when they get it. That's so cool. You would think that you sent them the hottest girl from Rhino you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> with, 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 uh, I like the plug. And, yeah. and, and, uh, and you could say to like my cousin, Anthony, yeah. you need to wear a condom with this one. Oh yeah. shit. <laughs> he, I don't know. He might pick, and he's a, he's a pig complete pig yeah he might take the polo jeans over it wow because yeah. it's real big there so polo jeans in, in sicily are like 250 us wow wow ones that you can go to like uh tj maxx and get for like 30 yeah they're like 250 us dollars over there wow so when they get them they think they're the shit and they're they're starting to get into the baggy thing oh yeah and then the italian fathers beat the fuck out of them and <laughs> you know way and shit yeah. it's nuts so now you've been world, what countries have you been to I've been to uh, all over Latin America. I've been to Europe. I, I haven't been to any of the Asian countries. Now, when you went to uh, the Latin American ones and yeah. uh, Europe, was the same thing? Found the place, promote it? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Now, tell me how um, uh, Europe was. Uh, Give me an example of one that you did and how you got it from what you walked into and then what it was when you walked away. Very similar. They're all very similar. Um it's usually either the management is a problem or the owner's the problem. <laughs> like uh, uh, with when it's the owners, they go into it because they want to uh, get with the young girls, mm -hmm. so to speak. Okay? Right. And uh, th they have no idea that there's actually a science to operating a club. You know, they they don't know poor costs. They don't know customer service. <laughs> they don't know staffing. They don't. They don't know. They just want to go in to be cool guy and get the young hot girls. So and lose their ass in the process. Oh, yeah. lose their ass in the process. So it doesn't matter. I, I kid you not. It doesn't matter what city, what state, what country that I've done the nightclub rescue stuff in. It's that. It's either mismanaged or misowned. And then when you try to tell the owner, hey, my man, uh, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your, what's oh the reaction? Oh, my God. There, I've had some say, get the fuck out of here. I've had others say, really? It's me? Really? What am I doing wrong? I'm like, my man, my man, you cannot fuck the help. <laughs> <laughs> you so, know? No, no, and when, <laughs> and when, when they say to you, right, they say, Tony, it's me? Yeah. What's wrong? You got to be thinking in the back of your mind. Yeah. Do you fucking see what's going on out here, or or, or am I in the fucking twilight zone? Do you ever think that when somebody said, "Is it me, Tony?" Yes, yes, you're yes. Like, I have you looked at the fucking numbers? Or are you just looking at ass? Just looking yeah. at ass. It just looking at ass. It's 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 comical. You know, it's, it's really comical. Like, uh, I'll look at the guys and go, "Why did you even get in this business?" What do you even know about this business? <laughs> What's the answer? Uh, they tell me, uh, you know, I, I got a divorce and I just wanted to get some girls, you know, or or they'll be like, oh, I always wanted to own a club. And, uh, you know, the club world is actually a pretty small world, you know, like especially in America. Most of the club owners know each other. And uh, now 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 it's gotten gotten corporate. But like myself I like to keep it more of that old school style of remembering people's names, greeting them with a hug. And like with Vegas, I think that if it does come back, this might be a, a wake up for Vegas because Vegas got so greedy, you know, and um, I'm not into greed. I, I want everybody to do well. Uh, I care about the customer and I care about the staff. To me, if you take care of the customer and you take care of the staff, the bottom line will take care of itself. But if you worry so much about the bottom line, you forget about taking care of the customer and you forget about taking care of the staff, your business is going to fail. And then because they hate you, they're yeah, going to steal from you. They're going to steal from you. They're going to rob you. Yep. But if you keep them happy and treat yep. them, they, they'll be like, why would I do that to Tony? Or why would I do that to, to Legato? To Legato? Why would yeah. I do that? You know? Yeah. And I know like when I go out to dinner, yeah. I, I go to places, I, but see, I go to places where people know me. Yes. They know my name. 
hey, Tommy, you want this one or that? I won't go a place for people who don't know. I See, won't go. that's exactly what I was just saying. But I, yeah. but I, but I think that's how it should be. I'm yes. old school like you. Yeah. And I was, he, uh, Rob was too. Yeah. Us three in here, and I, th- I'm, I thank you too, from our talk and everything. Yeah. We were all raised old school. Yes. Like old old school. Yeah. You know, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Open the door manners. for a woman. Yes, always. Yeah. I used to get my ass kicked if a woman, if I, at ten years old, if I didn't open that door. My grand, I didn't get the height. I got fucked. Yeah. My grandpa was six six, a big motherfucker, oh, that's not big. to be fucked with. Yeah. And by, and he was, they now they would call it bipolar, but back then it's just that you didn't want to make him mad. Yeah. At ten eleven, if I didn't open the door for a woman, it didn't matter if she was ten. It didn't matter if it was a kid. Right. Ninety, fifty, forty. Right. He'd be like, "You wait till we get to this car." Oh, and he'd give it to you. And he'd, and he'd <laughs> give it to me right yeah. there in front of everybody. Yeah. And I and from dealing with that. Yeah. I've always opened doors. I've yeah. always said thank you. You're yeah. welcome. And I'd also get my ass kicked for not saying excuse me. Right. If I just walk by somebody. Right. Or like bumped them or went across in front of them. And cut them off. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't say excuse me, another ass beat. So your manners are tip top. Yeah. Or I get at my ass kicked. Yeah. I mean, the first time, like like me and Rob always talk, the first time you get the belt, <laughs> right. ah, fuck it, you know, whatever. I, yeah. you, you think twice the second time. Right. You do it again and you come home, now you get the metal part of the belt. Uh-huh. Right on the ass. And then the third time, you remember that metal. Uh-huh. Mm, no. Yeah, no. I'm good. I'll uh, always say yeah, thank I, you. I'm good. I'm yeah. good on that one. The worst, yep. the worst always was when your mom told you, just wait till your dad gets home. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And with nothing else, I was like, fuck, it's over. It's Not over. Me. Yeah, see, yep. my, 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 my mom would say, your grandpa is going to be here. Mr. 6'6". <laughs> yeah, and she wouldn't tell me when he was coming. Oh, wow. So I'd be like, oh, fuck. I'd be sitting there on the couch. <laughs> looking out know, the window. <laughs> looking out the like, you know, because I could see, and I'd be like, oh, fuck. This fucking Buick or Cadillac's going to pull up. I'm fucking dead. Yeah. And I'd be begging my mom, don't tell him. Just don't tell him. Yeah. I'm not lying to him. Yeah. I'm not having him come. Nope. You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> usually, usually you'll get away with it. I used to do it all the time. Uh, I would fall asleep before my mom got home. And as long as I was sleeping, she kind of gave me like a little pass. Yeah. She, like, she's not going to beat my ass while I'm sleeping. But then obviously you don't sleep forever. So when I wake up, I got my ass beat. Oh, man. But you can stall it a little bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You can stall it. I didn't get any stalling because in my family, they were all gossipers. Uh, you know, oh, so like they man. would just be on the blah, 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 blah. And then they just couldn't wait to tell him. Oh, you wow. Know? It didn't, I could be dead asleep in a coma. Uh, it, it didn't. I imagine waking up to that. Ah, oh, uh, yeah. No yeah. one knowing it's not going to be a good night. Yeah. You know, but yeah. then it was over with. It was done and over with. Right. You know? Right. right. So, enough about me getting my ass kicked. <laughs> 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 but when you were, when you go to, to like redevelop a uh-huh. club in Europe, uh-huh. those countries, h- how different is it with the rules? Oh, every, every city has its own rules, let alone state, let alone country. Holy fuck, so that you, must be a you, you have to make sure you know the rules. One of the very first things that I did when I came to West Palm was tell me about the licenses. Because some cities is liquor till two. Some cities is Vegas, liquor 24 hours. You know, so what are the rules? You know, whether you're in Ibiza, whether wherever you are, what are the rules? Those are the rules. So... Once you know the rules, then you can build your business plan around the rules. Which ones are tougher? Or like California. In, ca- mm-hmm. I figured Two that. Two o'clock. Get the fuck out. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. What, what are they, what are, what's their curfews like average in uh, Europe? Oh, m- a lot of them are 24 hours. And Four in the morning. Latin America's got to be 24. Oh, yeah. I know, Latin I know, America, I know, I know you, they're not going to bed. Bro, you can... You can do a lot in Latin America. Yeah, I had I had a couple bars down here, just regular bars. Yeah, I had a beer and wine license. Yeah, and uh, I really it was really easy to get. I I was shocked I got it. Actually, uh, really shocked. Um, nice. The only I only had one run in, um, and that was with the fucking hot water. It was like one fucking degree off. Oh wow. Yeah, and then but he was reasonable, but he's like, look, and I'm like, dude, it's a sink I don't even use. Right. He's like it's got to be whatever the degree it is. Yeah. You know, it's like. It was literally like 0.7 degrees off. but And he wrote you up for that? He gave me two hours to have it corrected. Oh. So he said, I'll be back in two hours. But Did he right, come back? He, he was. Thankfully, he did. But yeah. I, I've had a bitch that didn't come back. Oh, wow. And she's a bitch. 
Uh, wow. She waited a day. She shut me down for a day, over one degree. Oh wow! And it wasn't like a, it wasn't on purpose. It's it was just a flaw in the system. Right. So it, it would, we would correct it and like turn it up more than it should be, and then over time it would just. Long story short, I had to redo the the piping. Right. So it wasn't on purpose. She would just come when the fucking thing was off. Right. She, I'll be I'll be back tonight. I'd sit there. She didn't come back three days. The bitch. <laughs> The oh, guy man. was cool though. He said, "Look, just fix it. You, your your people could stay, have a drink. Just when I come back in two hours, make sure it's fixed." He was really cool. Yeah. His name was Anthony. Yeah. So if you run into Anthony, he's cool. Yeah. If you run into a skinny petite woman with dark hair, <laughs> pray that everything is 100 percent right. 100 percent perfect. Like I mean, right down the line. Yeah. But but that was out in um, that was on North Lake Boulevard, which is oh, okay. like like Palm Beach Gardens area. Oh okay. So you're you're West Palm, so you, yeah, you, you might be. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're trying to do everything by the book, you know, make it beautiful, nice and clean, everything nice. Yeah, and then yeah. and then once you do have a nice, you'll start having him really push it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're starting to push it now. Not hard, but, you know, keep it, we want to steadily raise the numbers and promote it while it's under reconstruction and we're building our team. Then we'll get everybody trained and then we'll start going out, doing outreach and networking and promotions around the South Florida area, and then the, the place is under reconstruction every day. Like, we just put in a new lighting system, and it was so cool to walk in there today and see all these different lights and lasers and all this stuff, and I'm like, ah, now it's starting to look like a club. Well, did you have any problems with the lights? When I got here, there was really, like, no no lights. <laughs> <laughs> but but the installer, they, they came out perfect? Yeah, they came out nice. The, the, the guy uh, takes is taking three days to program them all. On the third day, he's going to work with Legato and, and the other managers and get it all dialed in and get everybody trained. And, you know, lighting is really important. The, oh, yeah. um, the ambiance, you know. Yeah. It's not just the sound. It's not just the pretty girls. The, the lighting sets the mood, you know. Right. As does the music, of right, course. Right, and has to be positioned correctly. Yeah. Because I did have I did have a beer and liquor license in Ebor, which is like kind of like by Tampa. Okay. And in there, that was more of a club thing. Okay. And the lighting was the biggest thing. Yeah. It was, you know, you have the DJ, not, yeah. not a guy like him, but right. you now this isn't... That, not a world-class DJ not a world like, class like Legato, thing. yeah. Decent, yeah. but not world-class. Right, right, you know? right, right, right. And, uh, you know, we had everything perfect, but the fucking lighting. Yeah. It was a bitch to understand. Yeah. I mean... More wires than those that amount of wires oh, times a hundred, man, everywhere. But in a club, you got to hide like them. I can just have them back there, and nobody walks back there, right? But the club, right, yeah, you know, you got to hide everything, yeah, you do. And you're, I agree with you as a customer or a client, yeah, that it's all got the light. You could have the best DJ, but if your lighting sucks, it sucks, right? Because you're like, oh man, you're not, there's having, something you, missing, yeah, you're having your drinks, you're trying to get into your mood, your vibe. You got the girls around you, and you're like, ah, this is kind of. But lame. if you got the, and then you have to position them right. Yeah. And then, like the background color. What what color yeah. is the background color again? Like what color did you make the walls? The walls, uh, the, the rhino has its own specific style of faux wall. It's actually kind of a uh, pull pull up pull it up. Um, the spearmint rhino, spearmintrhino.com. dot com. Yeah, I it, think it, I have it up there. It's the rhino. It's the rhino motif. No, not not that one. Oh, oh sorry. Spirit I'm sorry, Rhino. Tony. Spirit Rhino. Sorry I interrupted you. I was thinking It's okay. Something. And uh, it is the Rhino's Signia. It is their... Well, you definitely changed the website. Yeah, it's nice, huh? Um, Got some pretty pretty beautiful girls in the Rhino. Go to a uh, gallery, because then crew. you can see what color it yeah, is. Yeah, see the... It's a... Uh, it's a combination of gold and brown. There it is. See that? Yeah. Every club, that's the walls. Now, is that wallpaper? Or? No. It's faux. It's what? It's, 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 it's faux painting. It's it's a four-step process. It's a bitch. Do you know what that is, Rob? I've heard of it. Yeah. It's, 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 and that, that wall is the rhino motif. I mean, that is, you see, any club yeah. around the world that's a spearmint rhino, has those walls and that's like so, I, so when you see them in the picture oh that's the rhino that's the rhino and you know right away by the wall yes so it's the same color same thing same everything and if, what's that called faux faux f-a-u-x see look at her down in the bottom left right there see the brunette go down see the wall behind her boom yep. right there every club 
Doesn't matter what city, what state, what country. You know what? That is cool. Though. I like that. It's because pretty they, cool because it's easily identifiable. Yes, right? and, and and the 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 creator, the the big dog, John Gray, he invented that. He he's a beast. I mean, look at the monster company that he created, Spearmint Rhino. Fuck yeah! It's a beast. Beast. It's the biggest. Uh, it's the biggest in Vegas, isn't it? In the world. It's the biggest in the world. Yeah. Wow. It is it is known as number one in the adult entertainment in the world. How many do they have? Do you know? Ah <sighs> I'm hearing quite a few. I'm hearing seventy eight total that he has. Damn. Around the world. What do you think his bank so, account looks like, Rob? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Type in that faux shit. He's got he's got he's got how do you spell that Tony? F A U X faux. There it is, you got it right there. Fake, right? It's fake almost. Yeah. yeah. Imitation art. Yeah. yeah, that looks like a nightmare to put on. Oh, there. let me tell you, I've had multiple contractors here in Ve uh, here in West Palm. Give me. Uh, I don't know what that. Give me um, like samples, and man, they can't get it. They can't get it right. It, yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, and we're gonna repaint the whole club, and the club here is eleven thousand square feet, so it's gonna be a job. When did they start? You found somebody though. We found somebody, and uh, he got it right on the sample. So I'm hoping that he, he can do, do the, the whole the, the club, whole, man. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot to do. You aren't kidding. Did he give you any time at ETA? How long? He said a been? month. So hey, that's reasonable. That's why I said six weeks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I know that's a job. Yeah. I wouldn't want that job. Fuck no. <laughs> I would. And and you know. Yeah. I, I had an engineering firm. Yeah. I actually built part of the breakers that you guys went to. Oh, okay. That's beautiful. I, but I got bored with the engineering. It, yeah. I got boring. I didn't yeah. care about the money. I'm, yeah. I'm like, I don't care about the money. Yeah. If yeah. it's boring, I don't want to do it. Right. I got to have I was fun. At the, and then, it, you know, the engineers just started to get entitlement issues. And uh, it just, it was time to go. That's tough. You know, I did it. I beat issues. it. I did a big joint. Yeah. Done. Out of it. Nice. So I know a little bit about this shit. I mean, I can't swing a hammer, but I can watch somebody swing a hammer. Yeah. And, uh... That fucking wall is a bitch, and you, you got a lot kidding. of wall to do. A lot of wall, and it's all got to be right. And we have high ceilings right here in West Palm too. That's right. What are they? What do you think they are? Thirty feet at least. Yeah. And then what you're gonna hang uh, chandeliers from there? Chandeliers, beautiful ass. paintings, beautiful you know, beautiful pictures of our girls. And, yeah. I mean, big like eight footers, you know. Yeah. Beautiful. You know. And then, are you doing anything with uh, screens? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have some TVs. I don't think I saw. See, see how the the art is in the back. Always, uh, come down, come down. The girl with the tattoos. The girl with the tattoo on her ass. See, see uh, be, behind. Right there. Right there. Like behind there, you see the artwork of the beautiful girls. That's that's the the Rhino Way right there. That that is really classy, cool. sexy, cool. Yeah. I really, I'm I'm just really impressed with the wall. Yeah. That that that's. You could see that picture anywhere. Yes. And you see that wall, and it identifies where it was. That's, that's the Rhino. It doesn't matter if it's. It, Anywhere in the world, that's that, the Rhino Wall. That is one hell of a marketing tool yes. that that fucker came up with. Brilliant what he did, huh? And now years later, 78 joints, yeah. and all have the same wall, and you could tell. Yes. And then all you got to do, oh, there's a Rhino. Yeah. Oh. Do you plan on have having him travel anywhere to any of the others, or he's just here? No, 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 no. I plan on having him travel. This guy, this guy's the shit. He, he can fill a room and make it fun. So I plan on him having uh, different DJ gigs in different cities as well. Uh, all with Rhino or with different no, ones with that Rhino. you work with? with Rhino. All with Rhino? Yeah. And, uh, Congratulations, the, man. Yeah, Thank you. The, the, te the you. team that w we're building here is good. So you're only as good as your team. And you're only as good as your weakest link on your team. So I want to build the team so strong to where he could leave for a couple of days and not skip a beat. Now, when you say that as a mentor, because I want to know, when you say your team is only as good as your weakest link, yeah, what is it? What do you mean by that? If you have somebody on your team that like isn't thinking positively and isn't pro your team, they're the weak link, and they've actually caused you problems. They have to go. I see. Everybody on your team has to think the same or very similar way, pro whatever it is you're doing. And then your team excels. So make that statement again. Your your place is only as good as your weakest link. And what yeah. else? I I, I, yeah. I hold on to little things yeah. like this. Your team is only as strong as your weakest link. I like that. Yeah. 
never thought about that. Yeah, so so what I'm trying to do is train the existing people that are there into the philosophy going forward of kindness, customer service, being peaceful and loving. And hopefully they get it. And if they don't, well, then this isn't for them. I think they'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, I think they get it. We've had a couple meetings and they're digging it. They're digging the fun. They're, they're digging the fun. They're digging the and, fun. And, and you're building, you're building a uh, championship team, is what you're doing. I really, I really feel that. Yeah, I really feel that. And, and and you got the right mindset. Yeah. And you got a lot of egotistic maniacs out here, you know. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, it couldn't be a better spot. Yeah. You know. And I think with the customer, with I think the biggest thing that's going to make it great. Is him? Yes, absolutely. Um, the lighting, yeah. Um, just it being known, like with the paint on the wall, yeah. And maybe most of all is that everybody's treated equally, right? Yeah, if you're going to go spend ten thousand dollars to go in the VIP, you might get a little bit more attention, but then you have your other people to take care of people that aren't back there. Absolutely. And that's what you know. Just in my dumb opinion, you know, sitting across from you, not knowing anything like you, <laughs> or you, but. You know, over like say a year period, uh-huh. people are going to realize. Well, if I go into this other place, and I don't have five thousand in my pocket, I, maybe after twenty minutes of waiting, I'll get a drink. But if I go into Tony's place, Rhino, they're going to treat me just like the other person. Right. And that could be the game changer. Right. Yeah. And yeah. from what you're saying, that's what you're building. Yes. And that's how they start to merge over. Yes. He's there. They network. Before you know it. That's when the billboards everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then yeah. you, then you, you have a new problem of it's gonna have to be bigger. That would be cool. <laughs> you might, you might have to do that. That would me. be cool to. You I know, could see creating yeah. that kind of demand, you know, over the next couple of years and expanding. That would be really cool. Now, do you plan on living here for a while? For a minute, yeah, yeah. I want to get make sure and get the whole team situated and get the place popping and then sustain it. You know, sustainability is is the key. You know, it's one thing to get there. It's another thing to sustain it because what happens is you, you touched on it. The ego sets in. Everybody, everybody can, becomes cool guy. And, and what's the biggest word? Content. <laughs> content. Content. Yeah. content is content. the killer. It's yep. the kryptonite. It's the kryptonite. You don't want contentment. You want everybody still pushing 60, 80 hours a week, just like still hungry to maintain it and sustain it. And that, that's what I want to make sure of, you know, with the team is so they, they always stay hungry, always trying to, to strive to be the best. So now what it looks like, it looks like you'll go and make a business that isn't working work. Okay? Yes. Now yes. with Rhino, with Anthony, DJ uh-huh. Legato, uh-huh. do you plan on staying involved with Rhino for a long, long period of time? Yeah. Or is this going to be get it right, watch that it's sustainable, and then move on to the next thing? No, 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 no. I, I plan on being with the Rhino for... Until I can't do this anymore, I wanna I wanna help the Rhino be the the best adult hospitality company in the world. So this is your focus, and yes. probably focus till the end. Yes. Along with not forgetting about the other ventures that you've been on that you were able to make successful. Yeah, I mean, my goal is to try to live to be a hundred, disease free. That's my goal. And you think you'll be working with Anthony at a hundred? That would be cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Rhino, I should say. That would be cool. That would be really cool. Yeah, because I, I, I don't ever want to retire. I, I what think, would you do? You'd be bored out of your right, mind. Right, I'd be bored out I of my mind. Tell. I've been in the club world since I was a kid, you know? Man, Tony, if you've got a clicker, yeah. right, and, yeah. and you're counting people walking in, you're counting this, yeah. what would you do to retire? You know what you would do? You'd die. Click. No, I, you I, probably would die. You're right. I Within six would months, die. you'd probably be, be die. But I, I wouldn't know what to do. Because yeah, this well. this keeps you, every day you have something to look forward to. Yes. You, you know, like like, uh, like a lot of people die when they lose their dog. Right. The dog dies, you don't got to walk the dog. Now yeah. you're alone. You're yeah. 80 years old. You'll see, yeah. I, yeah. I've seen it happen how many times? And then yeah. the dog dies, six months later, they're dead. A, uh, the team that we're building, too, is phenomenal. The uh, Back to the, uh, remember I told you how I made the... At the maintenance engineer at the building. Yeah. He's now the daytime manager at the club. Then another gal that I that I met, she's a female. She's the assistant general manager. So the daytime manager is Francisco. The assistant general manager is Angelia. Strong, strong team. I call them the starting five. Then we're going to have Han, a, a young man, 
another sharp man, another sharp young man, and uh, Andrew, and that's our starting five. And then, and then we've got Future to handle VIP hosting and security and being the guy. Now, when you went to the maintenance guy, right? Yeah. What did you see about the maintenance guy that gave you the idea? I'm going to put him in as a manager position. He has been with me every single day at the club, day and night, doing maintenance, fixing things every day, and he never asked for any money. He never had his hand out. And I was like, man, he's just helping. Yeah. Going the extra mile, and I thought, what a great guy, because I usually work 60, 80 hours a week. He did too. And he wasn't always like, what's in it for me? So he was pulling doubles. So he was he was doing the maintenance of the high-rise building, and he was doing the maintenance on the club that you called a shithole. And I'd have to agree with you. It was, it was beat up. But you're fixing it. Yeah. Oh, of yeah. course. We're going to make it beautiful. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I can already tell. Yeah, we're going to make it beautiful. So you saw that he'll, he'll take this seriously. Yes. And he'll work his ass off. Yes. And not expect. Yes. And that's what led you to the... People watching this, you should think about it. Now, if you're going to run into a guy like Tony, I highly fucking doubt it. But should you run into a guy that's old school like him, Yeah, maybe yeah. you'll get lucky. Yeah, I'm totally old school. So you saw his worth act, ethic yes. and didn't act entitled, Not didn't entitled. envy. Humble, didn't grateful. Envy. Yeah. Yep. Was yeah. willing to go the extra mile and yes. boom. Boom. And with, same thing with, with the uh, Angela. Angelia. Angelia, I'm yeah. sorry. Same thing. You just saw him go the extra mile and not wanting Loyal. Loyal, absolutely. And she knows the bar real well. Well, She was actually uh, been in this industry too since she was 18. Beautiful young girl. She was Miss Puerto Rico. And she too is very honorable. Like uh, when you talk to her, she's very matter of fact. Things she says are true. She doesn't, uh, She, you know, in the month that I've known this, this clique of people, they haven't lied to me. That's a beautiful thing. You know, they haven't, they've been very matter of fact. And I really, really appreciate that. And very hard to find. Very hard to find. Without something somewhere being exaggerated or like a little white lie. But when you're trying to turn around a business, yeah. that's a very important thing. Yeah. And they all get along good. And so in building the team, I know that once the money starts coming in, they start making money, that they're still going to be cool together. That's really important. So I think it, it should all like be like a brotherly hood. Yes. You know, or brother and sisterly hood. You know, yes. where like... You have your family, but this is your family too. Yes. And you all have each other's back. You all, you know, if he needs a hand or she needs a hand, everybody has a hand. And everybody's got one goal. Yes. You're Success. not better than, than Anthony. Yes. You're not better than France, uh, Francisco, right? Yes. Francisco isn't better than you. You're all a team. Everybody's, yes. Yeah. I mean, that that's the I, – I haven't had businesses like you, but I've had a lot of them. Yeah. And every time one was successful, it was one, when everybody was on the same page – and they took it as their second family. Right. And meant that. Not just say that bullshit. Right. Meant, meant like, it. this is my, Merry Christmas, Happy yes. Birthday. You know. Genuine. Genuine. Yeah. Yes. yeah, like, this is my family. And when you have that and you find a team like that. Yes. You know. Let's Success. Go, let's go back to the, the GOAT. Brady. Who did yeah. he bring with him? Right. Kronkowski. His boy. Got him out of fucking retirement. Yep. And the other one. Yep. He always gives himself in trouble, but he catches that fucking ball. Who is yeah, it? Antonio, Antonio Brown. Brown. Yep. And I was just gonna mention that it's a good friend of mine. Is it really? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we did. had a we had a podcast together. Did he? Yeah. Well he did a hell of a fucking job. Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. I got an email from ESPN. They wanted to use a clip that I uh that I uh we recorded and it was crazy. It was right um in his office at his house. We had a few episodes. Uh, I was with him throughout the whole Oakland situation, and it was good to see him kind of get out of that funk he was in. And then, you know, if there was one person that was going to tell him, like, hey, let's get just let's just get the job done, it was Brady. Yeah. And he was excited and, to do that. And he, he brought his man with him. Yep, yep, exactly. And look what they did. Look what they did. And so, like, your fundamentals are throughout life in general. Yeah, Right? Absolutely. The way you go about your business, the way you go about your life, it, yes. it, 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 that can work in anything, not just anything. A, a club. Yeah, I, I also um, I, I uh, coach men's professional softball. Yeah. And so it's um, mostly like uh, ex-pro baseball players that want to continue to be competitive, so they play men's professional softball. 
and I applied the same philosophies to that as well. And it works. It works. And that's out in L.A., I assume. No, no, no. It's an all-star team from all over America. Oh, wow. So, like, in 2017, we won the world championships, and it was right here in Florida at, at uh, ESPN's Wide World of Sports at Disney World. Wow. Yeah, it was What cool. was the name of the team? The name of the team was Smash It Sports. Are you in the picture? Uh, yeah, I sure am. Yeah, I sure am. What uh, was it called? That's awesome. Yeah. Tony, man, you see, you're in some awesome shit. You're in- I, I love it. Yeah, it's like I said, I like to see people have fun, and I like to bring out the best in people. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Smash Your Sports Softball World Championship 2017. World Championship 2017. Yeah, that's awesome, man. There it is right there. That's us playing Smash It versus Rismondo. That's it. Go go to the go to the, the top one. The one uh, at the, right if, there. I, if I play YouTube, they'll copyright me. Just go oh, to images. Well, oh, yeah. okay, okay. If, if okay. anything but YouTube, I could play. There it is. There, yeah, some fucking you. But there it is. Yeah. There's your buddy, the man in black. Where are you? Right there. The only guy wearing black. In the middle? <laughs> right there. Yeah, click on that click one. Click on that. So then... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bring back memories? Oh, I love it. And uh, the guy next to me is a there he is. wonderful, wonderful man, uh, Jason Kendrick. And then uh, behind me is uh, uh, another Floridian, Jason Branch. And that's big Ryan Harvey with the big red beard. Uh, Ryan Harvey was uh, one of the top dra- top draft picks for professional baseball. Uh, yeah, that that was the team. Some big boys. Oh yeah, all yeah, big dudes. Yeah, they're big. Oh, big they're dudes. Big. Yeah, all big dudes. Now, Tony, I gotta ask you because you're from Vegas. What the fuck is going on with boxing? Man, what happened? It's fixed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know that. No. <laughs> There's nobody right oh, now. Oh, there's really. nobody. What would you think of that Tyson uh, Roy Jones? Oh, fight? I love Tyson. We watched it here. Yeah, yeah. I love Tyson. Tyson beat him. Oh yeah, for that, sure. There's no fight. Oh, Roy, he Roy beat could him. barely Come move on. at the end. Yeah, but they want to make the rematch. Tyson will win. But you know who uh, they're talking about having fight during who? negotiations right now? Who? Tyson and Holyfield. Ooh. Ah, yeah. I don't know if I don't know if Tyson wants to do that one. Wow. I mean, Tyson catches him he's done but holy feels he's been continuously boxing yeah yeah imagine that one who would you pick in that i'd still take tyson i was a little young back then i don't follow boxing but um i just remember the ear biting oh the ear biting well i can tell you this and i think tony would agree if tyson's coach the italian guy never passed oh that man would have went on probably a 15 year streak it just 20 yeah. years maybe yeah. just be you, you just say knock me just get this over with quick right yeah yeah <laughs> like how he did spinks uh cool right <laughs> yeah yeah kusamante kusamante yeah. yeah yeah he was phenomenal but he still packs that punch boy yeah he Ooh, does you get a tyson punch oh i don't give a fuck you're going to you sleep are. you're, going to, you're sleep. going to sleep yeah i don't care who you are <laughs> yeah yeah and uh and then the other one that everybody thought was boring was fucking lennox lewis lennox lewis and I think he's the most under, underrated boxer because he had that jab yeah. and you just couldn't get to him. No. And, that and he long, had the, the jab and the reach. Yeah, he had the jab and the reach. Yeah. And he would jab you six rounds and just s- slowly yeah. wear you down. And then he'd, yeah. then he'd hit you with that right. Yeah. But then when they lost, he was filming that uh, movie yeah. and got sloppy. And then and they got him. Then they got him. And yeah. then that was it. That yeah. was the end for him. Yeah. Now it's this UFC and all this other stuff. Yeah. Brutal. Is UFC big in Vegas? Oh yeah. Is it? Oh yeah. Oh it's yeah. It's huge, right? Huge. Yeah. I mean, back when uh, Tito Ortiz was uh, the king, I mean, yeah. it was humongous. You know, the Fatitas own it. Oh, oh yeah. The right. The Fatitas and Dana White. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I don't know if they recently sold it, but I, in its heyday, I mean, that was a yeah. I monster think Dana in Vegas. White sold it. I just saw him. I just saw a Rogan thing. He sold it to some. He still has a piece. Oh, okay. But the yeah. m- the big share of it is this some fucking company right you know? but dana's the main brainchild i mean he yeah. killed it yeah, good right. for him yeah. yeah he's a beast dana white's a beast yeah he's a beast yeah yep. yep you like floyd yeah i like floyd yeah hell of a boxer yeah the pound for pound arguably the best of all time who's better than him guy doesn't get hit nobody he doesn't get hit. he, he gives you the shoulder yeah like he does to all the girls gives you the shoulder yeah <laughs> yeah mm. i've probably yeah. only seen him get it 
I've watched just about every one of his fights. Yeah. I think he got cracked twice. Maybe. Who? Uh, Maybe. Uh, no, but he got. De La Hoya hit him. De La Hoya, that yeah. was the one. That, yeah. that was probably the only real blow I saw. Yeah. The rest of the time. No, nah, nobody he didn't hit him. him. Nobody hit him. He didn't catch him. No, no way. Hey, you know, uh, he requested uh, Legato to play for his birthday party here, just a couple weeks ago. Mayweather. Yeah, he requested him. Of all the DJs in the world, he requested Did he do Legato. It? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How was that? I had it on my Instagram. Yeah. How was yeah. it? Yeah. It was good. It um. When he came on stage to get his birthday cake, uh, I really got to like stand next to him and see his size. And I'm like, this guy is the man. And I'm like, looking at myself, I'm like, <laughs> you're bigger than him. Yeah. I'm like, uh, wow. It was just insane to know that like somebody like his size, his nature, like fucking up untouchable. everybody. Oh, untouchable. yeah. He's the best ever. He'll have to fight again soon because he runs through that fucking money like crazy. Mm. Uh, yeah, but he's still a specimen. He's still no, in yeah. great shape. Yeah, he's, he, he's still kicking anybody's ass in the ring. Pacquiao wants him. Pacquiao? Yeah. Mm, I don't think Pacquiao can get him. I don't They'll think fight, so but Floyd will win. Yeah, because of... Who's he fighting? Oh, yeah, the... Uh, Logan Paul, Jake Paul. Lo yeah. I don't, is he any good? He wants Not to against do Floyd. An Come on, Floyd's, <laughs> I mean, Floyd's a machine. I, I mean, is it even going to be a... Come on, Floyd's a machine. Yeah, this Logan guy? Paul. He's a YouTuber. He's being famous on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, um, Floyd, are, they're really doing this? Uh, new date coming soon. Yeah, they'll make a killing off of Oh, it. yeah, they'll make millions. But, uh, you know, uh, how I mean, that's not even a fight. Yeah. Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah. It's why it's just like it's an exhibition fight. Yeah. Now, what's an exhibition fight? the fuck is that now? Like, I would assume like a non title fight. Like, it doesn't mean anything, doesn't go on your record. It's not all the words. Logan's real good, but Floyd is in a league of his own. You got to be able to hit the guy. Right. You no, can be as nobody's going to hit Floyd. <laughs> no, he, he's Nobody, not going to get hit. Nobody's going to hit Floyd. Floyd's the best. And he's a little crazy, but he he's watching tape before he goes in there. Oh, That's why he doesn't get fucking hit. Of course. He's just crazy with the money and shit. But when it comes to fighting, fuck that. Yeah. You got no shot. Yeah. All right, go to uh, the first tab. I think you, you got... Oh, we already did that one. I just want to make sure we get everything out here for you, Tony. And this is this is your main Facebook page. Crazy girls. Uh, this is this is just you. Yeah, shit. You haven't posted since fifteen. Nah. I thought maybe you died. Nah. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Now, now what is this here? This is gonna be the the promo? What this is is Blow that up and uh, we'll play it to to promo it for him. Yeah. Watch and interact with live streams from the Rhino 2.0 compound. Oh yeah, me and Robert, I gotta talk to you about this. Profiles to gain access to exclusive adult content. Direct message your favorite entertainment with our multi-million dollar content creation platform. Subscribe to And that's hardwired into the machine, so that will look perfect. When it comes out, you're not seeing like a little bit fuzzy on here because we blow it up. Oh, cool. Or when it comes out, it will be perfect because that's oh, cool. hardwired into the system. Oh, cool. So we were talking, Rob, we, we saw it before you came in, and yeah. we said, what a fucking idea. Oh. What were we saying, Rob? Just uh, just genius with uh, the time we're in now and people yep. doing stuff virtually and Man, you could sit there and be like, uh, "Hey, uh, I'll pay you." I don't know what. I don't know if there's a subscription fee. I'm sure there's a subscription fee, and then, you know, maybe you put a little bit of bucks to show me something and do a little something else and pay yep. me a little more. And it's you got it nonstop cash. And it's it being is, built right now. Banger is, move. Yeah. Well, well, look at OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have our own. Yeah. Spirit Rhino is gonna have its own, and it's under construction right now. Yeah. When we saw that. Yeah, we said, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. this, 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 this is the... Next level shit. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you have a club, right? You have Spearmint Rhino, and I don't know what the max capacity is, right? Say it's 300. I don't know. Maybe right. it's more. Right. This is infinite amount of people. Oh, This yes. is infinite. the world, you guys. This is billions of people. And and I, I got to tell you, okay, so I have a guy that uh, works for me, right? Yeah. And I subcontract some jobs to me. He's in Pakistan. Yeah. 
And this is where this comes into play. Yeah. How, how big this is. Listen, this fucking guy. He is... Rob's dealt with him because it took us 60 hours to put that machine in. Yeah. Um, this guy can do unbelievable things on the internet. He can hack anything you want. I don't use him. I use him for my marketing because I have a marketing company. Right. But, I mean, he's the best of the best. A nutcase. No shit. A pain... He should pay me to have to deal with him. <laughs> That's how fucking bad he is. Wow. Uh, but, I mean, when I he worked for the Pakistan... He was like a Navy SEAL in Pakistan, but, but on the IT end. Yeah, on intelligence. Intelligence, wow. So now he's out of that. Oh, he's sharp as nails. He's sharp as nails. Yeah. I'll tell you, you you'll blow your mind. But anyway, so he gets paid a lot in Pakistan. You yeah. know, two grand in Pakistan is a shit ton. Right. Okay. He goes to this website called... Big O. You ever hear of that? I have not. You've heard of it? Yeah. Okay, so Big O, Tony, right? Yeah. Now, put this into what you're building here. Okay. You go to Big O, and you buy a virtual heart. How do you spell Big O? B-I-G-O. B-I-G-O. Okay. Right. Okay, so you buy a virtual heart. Okay. There's girls on there. They're they're giving their pitch. They're live, uh -huh. right? And uh -huh. they'll say, uh, send me a heart, and I'll show you my tits. Right. Okay. Now you could buy the heart with Bitcoin, credit card, or PayPal. Whoa. The heart for her to show you your tits is five hundred dollars. You buy it through Big O. Now you have the heart. You could send that to any girl you want. Girl says, "Send me a heart. I'll show you my tits." Okay. Boom. And this is worldwide. This guy's wow. in Pakistan. This bra is in Miami. Okay. Right. He buys the heart for five hundred. The company probably takes sixty, seventy. They give thirty percent to the broad, right? Right, right, right. She does it five hundred, two, three minutes, boom. If you send me a shield, I'll show you my pussy and I'll finger myself. Okay. Thousand. Thousands of Remember, shield. this is all virtual. Right. There's no mm -hmm. fucking shield. Right. Okay. He goes in, drops a thousand, she fingers herself for ten minutes. He saw her tips. He just spent fifteen hundred in fifteen minutes. Wow. And He's constantly using it. Guys in other countries that I work with constantly use it, and they are addicted to American Did women. your guy build this site? Did your guy no, my guy blows all his money on this site. Oh, oh, mm. okay. I'm talking like $10,000, $10,000 $10, a month at least on this shit. So it's called BigO.TV. Yeah, BigO.TV. You got to check this shit out. And every, I'm going to put it in my notes right now. Yeah, BigO.TV. Got it. And you can... You know, you start talking to these girls. They want shields. They want uh, like a unicorn. Tony's fifteen hundred. Wow. For a unicorn, she'll show you her tits, her pussy, and she'll put a th uh, what the fuck it uh, uh for fifth whatever the shield is, it's a time thing. Fifteen hundred butt plug, finger herself and tits for fifteen hundred dollars for three minutes. She wow. never had to leave her house. For ten for ten minutes, you send her two shields, three grand. She'll do it for ten minutes. Wow. That's three grand. Seventy probably goes to the company. Maybe if she's lucky, Tony. What thirty to her? Maybe. Yeah. Probably twenty. Yeah. How and it's how many uh, how many subscribers do they have? How many girls? Do, I, they, do they have millions? I I don't think I, I don't would know. assume you make your own know. profile and then get your followers. Like just like only. Fans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. go, like go to live. Um, you might see some fucked up shit. You'll die. Now because they tease you with the shit. Oh okay. Like see what she's saying. She's live. You, you'll die, Tony, because look, she's, this is all they're doing. Wow. And now she's going to ask for a shield. I mean, these guys in all the countries just sit all fucking you day and do this shit. I mean, especially with the world locked down right now. Yeah. Oh, they're killing it. And, and it's even delayed. And then they have this thing, you send me a shield, a heart, a unicorn, or something else, I'll yeah. give you my WhatsApp name. Wow. It's like 5K. Wow. Oh, she's talking in Spanish. Yeah. What'd she say, Legato? No, no, she wasn't talking Spanish. Oh, she... yeah. yeah, that was definitely not Spanish. So you, yeah. have, you have all, all kinds. Wow. But the point is, is, is that if you turn it into something like that and throw a little virtual thing, because this is worldwide now, yeah. right? Make some serious so money. So my guy alone... I, I, I give him $1,500 a month, right? Yeah. To do some of my subcontracting. Yeah. The 24th of every month. Today is the 5th. Yeah. I don't know him again until the 24th. Right. Just today, he said, hey, give me 1000 today. Yeah. You're you're clean. For, I, I, in other words, I would save 500 if I give him 1000 today. 
And I said, well, how do, how do you want paid? Right. Go to Big O and get me, co it's like coins. Right. Big O coins. Go to 1,000, buy me 1,000 and Big O points. Here's my username. And then it goes into his wallet on Big O. Wow. So, and this happens, this has been seven years now. Every single month, the first week of the month, he's broke. And he's got all kinds of guys paying him 1500 you wow. know, to do work, SEO work. Yes, yes, pr yes. Promo work. Sure. And by the fifth day, by the first week, second week he's at broke. the most, he's willing to lose 500 off of me, a friend of mine, that's 1000 because he asked me and the other guy at the same time yeah. to play this big O. Wow. My point is of, of how big what you're building with the app, basically, yeah, it can go. It can go way beyond OnlyFans. Oh yeah, OnlyFans, you have to have a, a, a subscription. And what I don't like about that is it's it's reoccurring. Right. It's good in one way where yeah, you're always going to take, but how many people is that pushing away? Being that it's reoccurring. Yeah. Right. So you, you would have to look at the numbers. Yeah. Right. And see, so is it better to just buy as you go? Yeah. And then nobody's stuck in and worried about. You know, I'm gonna have to pay that twenty a month, or is it better, number wise, to have the reoccurring? Yeah. On OnlyFans, I would think probably the reoccurring is good, right? Because it's really shit. But on Man, the, they're killing it. I know they are killing it. But they haven't. They don't have a competitor. Not yet. The big O is other countries, yeah. right? Right. But yeah. if you built what you're doing yeah. for U.S. and other countries, the world that would bury. And you see what what we're building is very similar. But we have all the brick and mortar clubs around the world. So let's say we start with all of our girls. That's thousands of girls around the world that are rhino girls. So you can see them online. But then you can also go to what city club they're working at and meet them. Right. You can't with OnlyFans. Nope. Right. Nope. You know, so. So now you draw them with the app. Yeah. They feel a connection with the girl. Yeah. Now they save up to make the flight to go to that club. Right. Right. That's that's our whole thing. And then thing. you've got the connects in Europe. Yeah. you got the connects in Latin. Yeah. He's got connects. Yep. I mean, man, that, 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 that fucking thing you're building yeah. might make more than the club in three years. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it will. I, I know it will. Yeah. Yeah. And the best part about it is you have to, you can't cheat. You can't cheat. You have to go through Rhino. Right. And you put in the paperwork. If you work here yeah. and we catch you doing this on WhatsApp, iMessage, whatever, you're fucked and we're going to sue the fuck out of you. <laughs> right. You got to. Right, right. right? If you well, don't, you, you know, know you know the fuck if you Oh, don't. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And then, But we're going to give them an avenue to make a lot of money. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah you don't give them more than 20% on the oh, 10K, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 for <laughs> like sure. Like you said, you keep everybody happy. Everybody happy. There's no reason to steal that, right? None, none. Got to keep them happy. Well, keep working. I don't want to keep you here too long, Tony. I okay. appreciate you coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. You got me. an awesome thing going on. Is Honored. there anything else you want to... Oh, I want to go to your Instagram. Because you got a lot of sayings. Yeah, I... I uh... I like I said I, I love like to that see one. people if happy. If you don't love what you do, fuck, fuck that. that. Because if you don't love it, it won't work. Right, it won't work. If you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. Then the money flows because you're happy. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're going just for money, you're going to be miserable. Right. You're not going to make any money. And I think it was. Uh, I don't. I think even though I don't like Bill Gates, it might have been Bill Gates. Yeah. I don't like him at all. Bill Gates is uh, Windows, right? Yeah. I wouldn't know because I don't fuck with Windows. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think he's a, sh a shady snake Oof. prick motherfucker. But uh, I think it was Bill Gates. The only thing I do like about what he said, I believe it was him that had said, and it might have been my man Elon, but I think it was Bill Gates, had said that he thinks that everybody for like a week should be rich or a month mm. and have all the money, all the cars in the world and see if that actually makes you happier. And the answer is no. Absolutely it no. But you have to have that to in order realize. to pay your bills. But I, I but I mean, no. but I mean, like. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like in my past, like I had a Lamborghini and a Bentley. And oh, shit. you're balling. No, yeah, I was killing it back then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I I would walk down and I would I was miserable. Oh, you I was weren't happy at all. No, I wasn't happy yeah. at all. And I had all the money in the world, power, yeah. cars, fucking watches. Yeah. Wasn't happy. Peace of mind. Peace of mind and quality well, of life. It only took 38 years to realize yeah. that I was fucked. There was a part of me that was empty that that hole just kept getting. You could buy everything in the world, but right. it, it's not happiness. Right. You know, happiness is 
being with other people that are happy and looking at the ocean and exactly. no materialistic shit. Right. right. You know, like I said, peace of mind and peace quality of, of life. Yeah. It took me a long time to realize what that was, but I couldn't understand it. And I kept buying shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. But that's awesome. I love that saying. Thank you. Tony, I know you're a busy guy thank and you. I appreciate you coming in. I really appreciate do. you. Having thank me. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for thinking of me. Like no Atu, as you said, networking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really respect you a lot before all this shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, thank you for thinking of me and, and bringing up Tony and, and bringing in a very interesting mentor thought process guy not just the club guy this guy tony here you could take what you just listened to here and you can apply this to your life yeah if you do you won't have friends stabbing in your back it's not just business right what you just said here is a way of life yes way of life absolutely yep. and yeah. uh i think it's very important thank you thank you you're very a very much. intelligent guy and i wish you all the success and thank when you. you have it all done i'm gonna find you okay and I'm going to click to see where fucking Tony's at. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and you come back in when it's all done and remodeled. Sounds and good. bring some pictures and we'll go through it all. No way. You're going to be a customer. I'll come in. Yeah. Super VIP. Yeah. <laughs> super. <laughs> yeah. But I want you to come back with all the pictures when it's done. Sounds Bef good. Before and after. I look yeah. forward to it. And we'll push the fuck out of it. Okay. We've yeah. got, got to bring Anthony in with oh, us. Oh, of course. The superstar, bro. Yeah. Superstar. Yeah. yeah. Right hand man. And right we'll have fun. Yeah. 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 So thank you again, Tony. Thank you very much. And Anthony oh DJ God. Legato. Oh hey, thank you for thinking yeah. of me. I really appreciate no that, problem, man. Bro. All right, thank no. you guys. Thank you.